This is the 120th installment of the Press the Giant Investigation at Lego, where adventure begins. <laughs> can't let it go, man. I can't let it go. Where adventure begins. Okay, okay. So we talking uh, Jamoki, Jamoki Campground, man. Cherokee call it Jamoki. We're still on a hunt for Mount Ararat. You know, I want to get some clarity. You know why this is a big piece, man? Because... We got so many body bags for the illusion showing that, validating that America's not only a ancient world, but the firstborn, you know what I'm saying, world out the primordial waters, you know what I mean? They got it in their secret books, but we're on our own investigation. And we can't talk priest king without talking orientation, without talking, you know, where is the true so-called Far East, right? So... When you establish that Noah is pulling up right here, that Mount Ararat is popping off right here. I mean, yeah, you know, everything else is just, you know, icing on a cake. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the the, the work is done. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I enjoy looking at this Ararat because it's such a body bag for any illusion, man, that civilization is possibly popping off anywhere else. When Noah is pulling up, you know, know who they call the second Adam, you know, populating the world in the biblical flow. You know, I mean, whether you're talking Moors and Canaanites, everyone got to pay attention to the Noah investigation, right? Everyone got to look at the Noah flow. And Noah is a priest king. This is the Presta Hour. Let go. Where adventure begins. Another body bag. So, yeah, this does look like a giant tree stump, man. A magical tree. All right, let's just call it a magical tree, and we're going to keep talking tree. We're going to keep talking tree. All right, all right. We're talking the Presta tree. <laughs> we're talking Noah's tree. All right, so we're on investigation. <laughs> you know, this is Jamoki, right? They said it means great guide, right? We said, okay, great guide. Like like Noah, you know, uh, pulling up, <laughs> popping off civilization, restarting civilization. <clears throat> or uh, a pilot. Now they call it Pilot Mountain. Con, con. Now they call it Pilot Mountain. You know it had to be a pilot, right? He <laughs> steered the ship, the spaceship that is, to my wave surfers. He needed a landing strip, right? He needed somewhere flat to pull up. And it just so happened that this Mount Ararat, and I'm not just calling it Mount Ararat, right? I mean, get Preston 119, pop off. We're in the ncpedia dot or talking about Surrey, right? We're going to get back on the Surrey flow, the Saracen, Saracen flow. You know what I mean? Definitely um, connect that with, oh, yeah, 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 with the Kara, what they call the Sara, back to the Surrey. Kind of, so the mountain is an isolated peak. And I said, what, what, what Noah would be pulling up? In a populated area or an isolated area. I mean, let's just, you know, let's just check off a few boxes here, man. <laughs> We're just milking in boxes right now, man. <laughs> would Noah be pulling, would Hawaii be guiding as the great guide, right? The great guide. Would, would Hawaii be guiding Noah to a populated area or an isolated area, right? An area known for isolation, right? So much that it's literally called the mountain away from mountains right we got that last time so the mountain is an isolated peak surviving in, from ancient mountains that have eroded or we're just talking about a tree that's been severed just like mount Roraima. but it still it still has its roots you know these, these giant trees are still rooted i mean walk with a naga let's go so the peak classified as a manandak Mana Nak, <laughs> Mana Nak, man, all right? Stands 1,500 feet above the surrounding countryside. When you look up, you know, these Mana Naks, you know, you could just see what they're talking about. Mm. 
mananak. So they just got a bunch of mountain peaks, those images. Let's see what they got as a definition because we ain't getting nothing from them images. What's the definition, man? Can y'all play? Isolated hill. So the main thing about the Manat Nak is it's isolated. What's the other uh, attribute of this Manat Nak? Isolated hill of bedrock standing conspicuously above the general level of the surrounding area. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So it has something to do with kind of just sticking up out of nowhere. Huh? <laughs> All right, so they would call these what mesas, tapuis, you know what I'm saying? Kind of just sticking up out of nowhere, huh? Ping power, isolated mount peak, higher than the normal level. Hmm. <laughs> they on that play play, man. All right, all right. So the peak classified as a Monot Knox stands 1,500 feet above the surrounding countryside. That sounds like the perfect landing landing strip for your ship, man. Now, um, I want to keep reading, man. A lot of stuff, we had to go quickly. I didn't want to go over three hours, man. So I'm going to take my time. Uh, we're going to get a document that, you know, also mentions that there's like a beach area. Like, it's like beach sand, they say, because that's where, you know, you know, where it was popping off, you know, like dry land, you know what I'm saying, at the top of this mountain, you know, that's. Now the water is lower, but when the water was raised, you know what I'm saying, this is this was a beach area, you know what I mean? So it's at the very top. And it reminded me of our land, man, uh, uh, out in Utah. Uh, um, you know what I'm saying? The first land that we got, it has, like, beach sand, like, way up. You know, when you climb up on one of the mountains, a whole little flat area full of beach sand. I said, dang. And, uh, you know, one of the... Uh, you know, great minds that was with us it was like, yeah, man, that's definitely all this, you know, was where the water level was. You know what I'm saying? This was like beach. Very important, man. Very interesting, man. So, but I didn't know, you know, we're just talking my not knocks to them. Okay. So, uh, a big thing. Okay. You know, we asked a couple questions, you know, would, would Hawaii have Noah pull up on a populated area or an isolated area? Okay. Check that off. Uh, this Monot Knock, you know, would it be a good landing strip? And, yeah, clearly it's sticking up, sticking out. All right, so, all right, check that off. Now, is it important to the real Nagas? You know what I'm saying? Like, Noah's area would probably be important, you know, to the cons already there. You know what I mean? I mean, it, <laughs> it would be an important spot, you know, to the cons, you know what I'm saying, all throughout history pretty much right it wouldn't just be important to them you know what i mean <laughs> but there could have been some cons already there <laughs> well, that's a that's a story for another day <laughs> but would it be important to the cons you know what i'm saying the so-called indians natives indigenous um you know throughout the years throughout his story right so you know it served as a landmark it says for indians and the pioneer white settlers so that's another check in the box that it is an important area. You know, I don't know. I'm not saying this one area it has to be the flow again. It connects also to Virginia. There's an area, Ararat, Air, uh, California flow. This amount, Ararat, uh, I think Washington flow. Yeah. yeah. Connected with this Copper Mountain flow, Iron Mountain, caught some creek. Snowshoe, and uh, yeah, man. I mean, you know, this hikers is popping off. You know, Aaron <laughs> approached its deep snow after the first mile on the Colts Creek Trail. Beautiful vantage point of Rainier in the morning light and a fun, easy, breezy climb. Okay, uh, is that the area? I don't know. We on the area investigation all of a sudden, man, but. It seems to be very important. We're talking preach, King. We're talking Noah, right? So let's go. 
So this is an area uh, connected with the Mount Rainier National Park, right? Again, some of my noggers already said this in the comments. It seems like our areas are always supposed to be state parks, national parks, you know, BLM, you know, all that stuff, man. So then they got a uh, Copper Mountain. <laughs> Copper Mountain, okay. Iron Mountain. Why is it called Copper Mountain, man? I don't know, man, but there is an air rat. There is an air rat in the Washington flow. And again, man, we're just looking for, you know, uh, things to connect. You know what I'm saying? That's what an investigation all. I mean, that's what an investigation is. It's been a long time since we've had explorers. You know what I'm saying? Like, now we got astronauts, but we used to have explorers, people that really wanted to find new things, new terrains, and now they want to make us feel like we just have everything mapped out. Everything's now mapped out. We're going to get some map drop, man. Love to the Aqua Tracy Let drop a map drop in the uh, drop drop chatter, 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 chatter at the Wada. All right, so, you know, a lot of things we don't know. You know, they want us to believe, again, Mount Ararat is over there in eastern Turkey. Then you got to connect the Turk, the real Turk flow with America. And that the real ancient Turkey's right here. Yeah, they seem to have duplicated ancient American over there. Who's they? <laughs> so a lot of things are connected, man. This is, this is a landmark. There is some type of little peak or, in this case, a flat area. And, you know, we keep getting a different document. Say it's a level area like a like a mesa, all right? And it is isolated, called the mountain away from mountains, come. And we are just talking about this Jamoki flow, right? The great guide, <laughs> Jamoki, okay, okay. It appears as Mount Ararat or the Stonehead on the Fry Jefferson map. So on these maps, there's a Mount Ararat Right here in North Carolina that we're talking about. This is the one we zero in on, but we also talk in Virginia since it's all connected. All right. Just follow me now, man. Rock with it now. I mean, what else you got to do but talk about air right? and press a John 120, man. Hey, call me Hano. Yeah, man. Yeah. Mount Ararat or the Stonehead. What's the Stonehead? What's the Stonehead? <laughs> All right, so it's on the Fry Jefferson's map, 1753. It's on the Collet map, 1770. It's on the Price map, 1808. So this is undisputable. <laughs> This was a heavyweight fight. Mount Ararat in North Carolina would be undisputed champion. <laughs> Seems to be where everyone's zeroing in in the States on Mount Ararat. Seems to be all happening about Mount, around Mount Ararat. Man. The Devil's Den on Pilot Mountain is a small grotto from which a steady breeze blows at all times. <laughs> what does that mean, man? A steady breeze blows at all times, man. We're talking the devil's den or the dragon's den. Dragon's like <laughs> got a steady, some steady dragon breath, man. <sighs> With Hawaii Park boasts on the isolated uh, Monondoc <laughs> Plateau, Dupuy, isolated with some dragon breath popping off, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, everyone seemed to be zooming in. Again, you got the Friar Jefferson map, 1753, the Colette map, 1770. They got Mount Ararat right there, man, before they changed it to Pilot Mountain and the Price map, 1808. And they said the Jamoki, called Jamoki by the Indians, meaning the Great Guide. So we're not just talking about the trail when we was over here surfing the wave on the Jamoki trail. 
There's a Jamoki trail, right? But the whole thing is a Jamoki. Like, the whole thing is called Jamoki, right? So, and it said meaning the great guide. Interesting, right? The great guide. Okay, okay. Let's go back. Let's go. Let's fall back. Because I'm, I'm about to talk, talk trees. Right? I say we're going to stick to the trees real quick. <laughs> Real quick. It's always good to talk trees sometimes. Drop talk tree very well, man. Drop talk tree very well, man. With mountains with trees, man. Don't you forget, man. Let's go. <laughs> Ararat, North Carolina. All right, so you got this little small city popping off line, railway line from Mount Airy, right? And this little city now is called Mount Airy, but they're not calling it Mount Ararat, right? They're not saying Aaron. They're just saying Mount Airy. Okay, okay. All right. Cold word Airy. Cold word Airy. Let's go. It's getting kind of airy. Yet yeah, Mount Ararat is right up on the maps in the 18th, even 19th century. We got great confirmation here. Back to a plain truth.info. We got real car. Start talking car. Again, you know, we're talking about air wrap. Right, the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of air wrap at the Genesis chapter 8. Mount Ararat is known as part of the Pilot Mountains in North Carolina as a throw-off because the Mount Ararat in North Carolina fits the biblical description of the resting place of Noah's Ark way better than his counterpart in eastern Turkey since the Bible mentions the mountains of Ararat and you have several mountains in that area according to the 1751 map from the Library of Congress. Plus, when we factor in the Ararat River, Ararat, Virginia, and Arid, North Carolina, which we just got. All of the said Arid place names suggest that the biblical Mount Arid was in North Carolina, which means the real ancient Turkey was in the Carolina. Ah, 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 ah. So we're just talking a car, right? The car could tie. We always got to take it a step further. We can get some drop, but we always got to connect it ourselves because they're going to go car or black Turkish and leave it right there. They're not going to really connect you with the car, right? <laughs> you know. Isolated. Car. Kata. Kata. Who will who is Preston John? I mean, this is the Preston investigation. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, how you want to get it? From the Encyclopedia Britannica, Encyclopedia.com, <laughs> from from these bloggers, man. You know, you see different witnesses explaining to you that the car at the time is the black cat thing. The title of the car at the time rulers of was Gurkhan or Kor Khan. Yeah, that of the Khan of the car at the time, right? So the car is the car Katai, all right? Black hat day, right? <laughs> so called black hat day. What is the car? Right. And who, who was President John? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is one of the first last man we've ever surfed away, man, man. Newadvent.org, man. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man, it's about to get good. We talking praise king, man, and there's a lot of titles, man. The horrible slaughter committed by the Mongols soon proved that they were no pious pilgrims bound for the Holy Scepter, still less were they Christians. After a short time, the legend assumed another form. It is said that the Mongolians were the wild hordes mentioned in the Presbyter's letter to Manuel, that they risen up against their own ruler, King David. I know, right? How could we be talking King David and be talking Mongols? Unless Mongol meant something else and they, you know, gave us images and showed us, oh, these are Mongolian barbarians. This is what a Mongol looks like. They said the same thing about everything else. This is what this looks like. When all this is you, everybody's in your tent. Everyone's taking your titles. But I'm talking car because, you know, over here, man, but, you know, if we just trust one source, right, it's, it's going to get real general. That's all you're going to get. We want to know who the car are, right? Oh, Carl, black. <laughs> hey. Black something, right? Lena means tender. Black tender. Black tenderoni. That's all you're going to give me, man? It's the black tenderoni, man. <laughs> I'm going to get back to error. I mean, you know, don't trip, man. I'm just popping off, man. We reaching maximum pop-offness around here, man. I mean, we're talking error. Watch how this connects to uh, mulberry trees, man. <laughs> it's all going to go back to the mulberry trees, man. I just want to, you know, get it right, get it right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're getting it, you know, from another source. Uh, oh man, this is good. Sorry, I just caught caught wind of something. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> Cause this this is showing you that after. See after this. In the year of our Lord, 1202, after the murdering of David. Now, we're not sure if that's David Sauceland or, you know, Preston David. You know what I'm saying? Which David is? You know, we got, you know, both links up in Genie. Is it the David Sauceland or is it uh, his father, Preston John Roger Hiraja? But either way, a David supposedly was murdered. Okay. I don't know. I don't have no confirmation. This is just the word, right? Word on the street. Now, after that murder, after that takeover, 1202, all right, now you got 1221, all right, 1219, 1222. Now, this is post-murder, right? This is after the murder of Dawi. Now, this says... They had risen up against their ruler, King David, murdering both him and his father, right? So what was it? What was it? Yeah, we're going to connect the timelines back to the king of Georgia. Bragging Tony's because now we're back to the Sauceland flow. Exilarchs, right? These are Exilarchs. What did they put them in 1750, 1300s. Remember the three major chronological time shifts. So we're all over the place in the timeline. We're putting it back together again. 1300s. Estimated before 1300, right? So we easily are back in the 1200s. Easy, easy. Now, is this the David? Let's just put the time together. All right, we, 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 we searching it out. Get out our way, hijack. 
I, I think we are hovering in close on something. I'm not saying we got everything. Could be something, could be nothing. But I'm saying we're asking the right questions. So this 1,200 year is very important. Now this 1,200 year could easily be 1,500, right? So we keep that in mind. But is this the David that got rolled up on in so-called murder, right, by Genghis Khan? And then Genghis Khan assumes the name David. He takes the Khan title. He's not Genghis Khan before that. Now he's the Khan. Now he's David. Now he's Presta. He's all these things, right? But he took the Khan. He stole the Khan. Now, his father, remember they said murdered David and his father. His daddy is who? You know, if he's a David, <laughs> he's a David too, right? We just back to press the flow. So this is what we keep in mind when we look at this timeline, this history, and then this again is, <laughs> you know, right there, right? 12 or, excuse me, 1195, estimated before 1195. He's popping off already. Okay. So. If he's murdered in 1202, 1221, right? Genghis is now Khan. He's now calling himself David. So now in the spring of 1221, the report was circulated among the victors that in the East, King David, either the son or nephew of the president, right? <laughs> well, which one is it in 1221? Because the son of the prester is David, or a David, David the sixth, right? XLR. Keeping it open minded, right? Just open investigation, checking it out. Um, now, what would Genghis be? See, Genghis would be more like a nephew. Because it says that prester took him in. Genghis's father was the best friend of who they call Preston John, right? So Genghis's dad was best friends with the Preston, with David. They were called blood brothers because they, you know, were sworn like a sworn oath. I'm going to protect you, you know, you know what I'm saying, to the blood shed, you know what I mean? <laughs> Till I shed my last drop, I'm going to protect you, you protect me. So he... He took in Genghis, but Genghis wanted to be a David. Genghis wanted to be the Khan. Genghis wasn't happy with his lot. Sound familiar? Lot wasn't happy with their lot. Sound familiar? And whether they say Genghis is from Moab or Moab, we're talking about a biblical war. We're talking about the King David. But not in the BCs. We're talking at three major chronological time shifts, remember? 333 years, 1,054 years, and 1,778 years, man. Almost 1,800 years. So you got to be willing to shift time at least 1,800 years to put the story back together. If they put this David 1,800 years back, he'll be in the B.C.s now. And that's how they'll write the biblical story. But instead, you're finding the phantoms and duplications, which are really the originals, according to Anatoly Fomenko, and everything else was projected in the past to make antiquity to create antiquity all right they're creating antiquity my man. they're creating history right because when you push if i push you a thousand years back now i got a whole thousand years to play with i got a whole blank sheet of one thousand years to write history and i push the real history back 1800 years man so now they can give us this fake ass history these fake ass genealogies these phantoms and duplications man Yourself take the wheel, man. So which David? They said David and his dad. What? They had risen up against their own ruler. Remember, Mongols means great ones. The great ones. This reminds me of... Uh, yeah, this reminds me of this chronologia.org. That's also putting together the history using the same Anatoly Fomenko 
research that we were just talking about with the three major chronological time shifts. See, so everything we're saying, we were showing you the recon, you got to argue it for the Manco, right? <laughs> you got to argue with these chronographers putting this together, man. So, you know, you, you got to go to Russia and talk about that, man. Because a lot of these histories seem to be matching up. They're saying the chronicle of the czars or khans, because czars is khans, like Caesar is just khan, or priest, from 1276 to 1600, according to the new chronology by Fedomenko and Nosovsky. What does this chronicle show? That the Russian horde from the 14th to 16th century. Right, that's 1400s all the way to 1500s. Tsar Grad Kingdom of the 11th through the early 13th centuries are crucial for the practicality for practically all ancient Scaligarian history. And Scaligarian and Batavius is who we trust in with this entire timeline. Before you argue against it, just say, Who is Scaligar? Who is Scaligar, man? Do I trust this jabroni with my history, man? Here is the list of the main phantom reflections of the Russian czar's cons of the 12, 60, or 76 to 1600. So this researcher, this scholar, right? This is his recon. I don't know, right? We're just putting it just like with the uh, Mount Ararat, right? We're <laughs> seeing all these map makers with Mount Ararat over North Carolina. We're getting more validation. That's all. We're building our foundation for what could be a case of, of mistaken identity, man. Because the ancient Russian history between the 10th and 13th centuries, the Habsburg Empire between 1273 and 1600, the Holy Roman Empire between the 10th and through 13th centuries, the ancient kingdom of Israel, the ancient kingdom of Judah, <laughs> This scholar is saying this is all the same damn thing. That this is a biblical family we talk about. Whether you're talking about these Romans, even these, um, you know, Charleses and all this. Yeah, you're talking Moab, you're talking the Mon, you're talking the biblical tribes. You're talking the biblical beef, you're talking the Confederacy, Psalms 83. Either way, we're all related, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> through Abraham or through yada yada. You know, that's a lot different than these hijacks today that we got no relation to. But all these ancient kingdoms are the same family. But look how they're spread throughout history. You got to go B.C.'s, <laughs> Second Roman Empire, first century B.C. through third century A.D. Uh, you got the Tsar Rome, first Roman Empire. 8th through 16th centuries B.C. Look at that, man. I mean, then the B.C.'s away to the 13th century A.D. And it's the same damn thing. That's over That's that's, that's over 1800 year time shift. Would they do it? Would they do it to us, drop? And keep rewriting history in all these places? How many Moseses you got? You got a Moses in the 3rd century. You got a Moses mama need is, is popping off. I mean, he's writing the code, too. You got Moshe of the scripts, you're supposed to be BCs. Man, you got a lot of Moshe's, man. <laughs> Moses the Black. Man, go get the drop, uh, the three Moseses, man. I mean, that, that's one of the Preston flows, man. You got all the links below to the entire Preston John investigation. Because Managa, ain't nobody going to say that we didn't do it. Do the work. Our work. Our work don't have to be your work. You ain't got to come try to poke holes in our investigation. Just pop off your investigation. If it's popping, we're going to listen. You know, we're going to say, hey, how is that connected? It seems to be popping. <laughs> it seems to be popping off. So, you know, we all need to be popping off, man. If you got full pop offness, but if you ain't willing to do that, they just fall back, man. You know, be a fly on the wall, man, or get about the classroom because these noggins is popping off. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing you can do about that because we popping off everywhere. This ain't one person's investigation. This is Drop Nation. A lot, of, a lot, of, wow, man, a wow, wow. The Tsar Rome, zero 
Byzantine Empire back to the Byzantine flow. We got to get on that. Cause now you're getting back to the Mazaka flow. The Moses, the Moses, the founder, Mosak, the founder flow. Primal, fundamental ancestor, Moshe. Man, that's back to the Khazaria flow. Cause we're talking the Khazars, but the Tsar is the Ka. So you can't get these hijacks, jabronis, no Khazar title if the Tsar is the Ka, man. And the Ka, you already know, we're talking drag. Ka. <laughs> The first half of the Byzantine Empire, 8, 830 to 930 AD, the first half of the Byzantine Empire, third, excuse me, the first half of the third Byzantine Empire, 1150 to 1300. That's right, that's right, in the David Sauslin era, right? Huh? <laughs> All right. And the press to flow, you know, that we're getting with the press of John Letter being 1165. I mean, I know it's a lot to remember, but. This has been a long investigation. All right. <laughs> the history of the medieval England, uh, 400s, all the way to 1327. All this is Hebrew flow. Empire, the Carolingian Empire. And listen, you're talking Presta of the Three Indies. It don't have to be in one continent when you're talking the Presta of the Three Indies. King David is the king of the world. Presta, Melchizedek, that energy is the, is the Rex Negus. They got tired of being... You know, this this confederacy got tired of being up under Dawi, uh, up under the creator sea. So they all bound it. They had to form the damn Avengers to take down Preston. You know what I'm saying? That's what the Avengers is all about. <laughs> Hijack City, man. Yeah. Mongo means great one. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ark of the Covenant. All right, all right. Yeah, I mean, look, I, you're going to get the math, man. You know, I'm going to leave this for you so you can add it up for yourself and just, are oh, they talking Aleppo? We still got to talk Aleppo. We still got to talk Aleppo because the Aleppo Codex is running around here, right? So, all right, all right. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to Mount Air. Right? I'm just popping off, you know what I mean? So, so again, Mongo means great, one, right? They say it over and over again. This is another document connected with that document. I leave them both. I think we left them, you know, a few times before. Oh yeah. Badu Khan, Batu Khan, huh? <laughs> We've been connecting this. Vatican. Oh, what they do? Just um, repudiate? Oh, I got on the other link. Yeah, I love the Mac Mac. They just re repudiated. Nah, man, they didn't uh, reverse anything. They're just trying to divorce themselves from the conversation. You know, so this research is connecting all the fandoms, all the duplications, even this Ivan Kalita, which we haven't talked about at all. Continue uniting the lands under the rule of Lord Norvgord the Great, which was started by his brother, Georgie. <laughs> That's when we start talking Georgies, huh? Ah, another title, right? This is another title like David. So he'll be, called, he'll be called David, he'll be called Georgie. All these are great titles. But originally, these are Hebrew titles connected with Hebrew. During his time, the Mongol conquest spread far to the west and to the south. He finally had subjected the Western Europe in the 14th century. He founded the Vatican in Rome and Italy as a center of the social and religious power of the west. The word Vatican itself probably originated from the name Kanbatu. And again, we also could break it down as Baat, like the house in Hebrew. The second letter of the Hebrew is Baat. House or floor plan. You know what I mean? So, um, house of the Khan could easily be that translation. But, you know, definitely, you know, eventually became a Batu Khan scenario. So by the time we're getting the 
uh, you know, Doctrine of Discovery, Dumb Diverses. I think it's still coming out of the same families, you know what I'm saying, that the Vatican is named after this back to conflow, at least more currently, you know what I mean? It, it's not some white people writing this, man. It's still these melanated tribes that connect to Batu Khan or, Vatican, or uh, Georgie, you know, Genghis Khan. And that might be what they are bullying about today, if you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I mean, you know, this is, a, this is an investigation into us, man, into ourselves, man. At the end of the day, it's a family affair. It's a family situation. It's a family situation. Khalif, Khalita, so this Ivan is also the Khalif, okay, okay. Ivan Khalita was the czar, pontiff, simultaneously in the West, his memory lived all long after him, which in time became the stuff of myth and legend, and the ancient god or king crone of the, of the medieval king, priest, John, the presbyter. All right, so, and that's interesting, man, if... This King Crone is another phantom and duplication where they're trying to deify Melchizedek or deify a priest king. You know what I'm saying? Melchi King, Zedek priest, or Priest John. Are they just trying to spin that in like they do the Marvel characters? You know, they deify all these characters. He died in the West, probably in Italy. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Just digging on it. But again, we're talking Mongo. We're talking great ones. Yeah, we're going to dig more on that Ivan. Another time, man. <laughs> so here they say Mongol, quote unquote Mongol equals great invasion begins. They're you know saying by the end of the first half of the fourteenth century the restoration of the empire commences under the rule of Ivan Danilevich, Kalita, Khalif. This is just Russian history that they're trying to tie into, you know, this Israelite flow. Alright, so and we already know we're talking roots. We already know we talking roots. <laughs> Cause the roots is the truth, right? So don't don't let it go over your head. We're talking Russia, we're talking roots, roots, R U S R O S. It's spelled all these ways on the crest. <laughs> oh, that's a bar, man. <laughs> R O S R U S is spelled both ways on the crest. Bars, man, because wisdom is the conquering fortune. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking roots, man. Don't, 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 don't let it throw you crazy when we're talking, you know, this, um, Ivans and Donovich and all this, all this Russian stuff. All this is Nagas, right? All, every time you see this Russian talk, I need you to think Naga talk. I, think, I need you to think Nagas, you know what I'm saying? And I definitely need you to think Lost Tribes of Israel because I'm getting this off their sites. This is the red thread.net, you know what I mean? Lost Israel, Lost Tribe of Israel identity, right? The Rus, right? Who they call Saracens, right? <laughs> okay, man. Clan Raw, stand up, man. That's who, that's who the Russia is. Russia is. But again, when they say great equals Mongol, they're saying that Mongol equals great. Great ones. Just like Moors, they'll say equals great, right? So you have to now connect. It's a synonymous thing, you know what I'm saying? Mongol equals Moors, right? Now, Moors is generic for great ones, right? So, yes, we Israelites are Moors, but not all so-called Moors are Israelites, right? Right? You get that? Okay. Um, yeah, you know, Mongols are great. Uh, well, Mongols equals great. Nah. Israelites are Mongols, but not all Mongols are Israelites. Okay, yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to put this together for y'all. Rock with it now, man. <laughs> And again, Mongol, i.e. the Great Empire. So when we talk Mongol, we're just talking Great Empire. Okay? Okay. The Mongol Empire or what? The Great Empire. Empire. And the Russian Horde. And Horde means order. Horde is order. Go get the drop. Let's go. 
So this roost, well, you know, so the roost, that's all we say, let's, let's decode it, the roost, are the greats. Why are the roost great? All right? The roost are the greats because wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. Con. <laughs> Hit the easy button. Aba. Aba. Let's go. Got it. And again, we got uh, at the moment. Or, you know, let's get it right here. So at the moment of maximum expansion, a decree proclaims, quote, all subjects are commanded to live in a peace with one another and the powerful are forbidden to oppress the poor. Until then, the great Khan is the only sovereign and his word is the will of heaven and on earth. Don't that sound like how King David is one shepherd, the shepherd of Hawa? So on earth, that's the only true sovereign is that lineage right there, that that's where the government, the covenant is popping off from. That's the, you know, so there's no confusion. One shepherd, Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel 34. God. The chronology of this expansion corresponds to the chronological reconstruction promoted by the new chronology. We're talking about these three major chronological time shifts. We're talking about phantoms and duplications in the timeline. Let's go. Number four, King David of Israel is equated to the great Khan and this one to Preston John of the Indies. And then later they say, well, we think according to the Mongolian project uh, is the same or is the same as the people of Israel, right? And that Genghis Khan would be King David. I mean, how could that be, right? How could that be? How could that be if Genghis Khan is rolling up on Preston John. Because we're talking about this Mongol slaughter. That means the great one slaughter. That means the more on more war. That's been in full effect. They ain't Christians. No, nah, they is not, right? <laughs> After a short time, the legend assumed another form. It said that the Mongolians were the wild hordes mentioned in the Preston Preston's letter to Manuel, they had risen up against their own ruler, King David, murdering both him and his father. The Speculum Historial of Vincent of Barve says in the year of the Lord 1202, after murdering their ruler, David, the Tartars, that's Genghis Khan, and then the Tartars, Tartari, <laughs> India Superior, said about destroying the people. Certain historical facts from the basis of this remarkable report, Bar Hebrais mentions that in 1006, the Mongolian tribes of the Karyat, Karyat, remember we're talking Kar, back to that, in Upper Asia, had become Christians or Nestorians. We've been talking about what that really means. The Nestor connects to the old kings renowned for wisdom, and wisdom is the conqueror of fortune, my not. According to the account of, Rubri of Rubriques and Franciscan, these chariots were related to the Namans. These chariots are the same car. But they just going to tell you the root word of car, line is car, car, which means black and Turkish. You're not going to take it to the chariots. They even practice chariism today, right? They even practice Kariism today, right? Can't make this stuff up. Hoo hoo! Uh, <laughs> Mad Mac gonna love this man. <laughs> Kariism also spelled Kari. Remember, we're just talking Kar. <laughs> huh? I can't make this stuff up. All right. Yeah, it means black and Turkic, but what does it mean in Hebrew, right? Some say to read. Okay. How would you break down the Kara in the Pictopaleo? You tell me. We're talking the Resh, the Raz, the Resh. Huh? All right. Go, go, go get it. Y'all let me know in the comments how you break down the car 
rock in the Pictou Paleo Hebrew, a Jewish religious movement that repudiated <laughs> that's from Matt Mac, oral tradition as a source of divine law and defended the Hebrew Bible as the sole authentic font of religious doctrine and practice. So, what are they repudiating? Uh, divorcing themselves from the oral tradition today. Uh, this is Kara is a Mac Mac, so they're just repudiating. But the real Kara is repelling this stuff, right? Repealing this stuff, right? It's it's reversing this stuff. See, the real Kara will be reversing, not just repudiating. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because love to Mac Mac. The Vatican has repudiated this colonial era doctrine of discovery, right? Shout out to routers.com. And we say, are they repudiating? I mean, like, are they reversing anything? Are they giving Nagas back what has been taken from this doctrine that they admit to being behind, but now they're just casting it away, discarding it as if in 500, 600 years they didn't completely massacre and genocide and destroy nations and what else? We're talking about this doctrine of discovery, Papa Bull, 1452, which is always going to be relevant to the press or investigation because it's relevant to you. Because what did they do to the lands of the Preston Child? We weighing all in singular the premises with due meditation and noting that since we had formerly by other letters of ours granted, among other things, free and ample faculty to the aforesaid King Alfonso to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens and pagans whatsoever, and other enemies of Christ wheresoever place, and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by them, and to reduce their purses to perpetual slavery, and to apply it appropriate to himself and his successors, the kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and to convert them to his and their use and profit. By having secured the said faculty, the said King Alfonso, or by his authority, the aforesaid Infante, justly and lawfully has acquired and possessed and does possess, as you know what I possess, these islands, lands, harbors, seas, and they do of right belong and pertain to the said King Alfonso and his successor's boss. This is issued from the Papal Sea, the Vatican, the Batu Khan, back to the Genghis Khan, Georgie, right? He took the title David, right? Yeah, this is Georgie's peoples, man. This is Genghis' people talking. They weren't trying to get all black people. They weren't trying to get all greats. They weren't trying to get all the Mongols. They were just trying to get Israel, Judah. Right. Because he wanted the Khan. He went after the Saracens. He went after the Rus, right? Yeah, we're talking about Genghis Khan would be King David, but how? He must have took something. He went after the Saracens, right? Where X marks the spot. Yeah. He went after the Rus. We talking Russia? Is they talking Russia? Last time that I checked, they, st they still talking Russia. And they're saying that the Russian, the Rus, and the Mongol are the same project, the same thing. The great ones. King David of Israel is equated to King 
the great God, and this one the Prester John. So King David of Israel is Prester John. King David of Israel is the great Khan that Columbus is looking for the great Khan. But by that time, who took the Khan? Who took the Khan? Genghis Khan can't be King David if he took the Khan from Dawi. They did more than that to the Saracen. Invaded, captured, vanquished, murdered, <laughs> subdued. All Saracens, right? Took the kingdoms, dukedoms. Damn, they done took everything, right? And you telling me over 550 years later, you come out and say, you know what? Even the Pope didn't even say this. Just a member of the department said, we repudiate. <laughs> the doctrine of discovery. It wasn't very Catholic of us because it was used to justify European conquest. Really? It was used to justify invading, searching out, capturing, vanquishing all Saracens, all niggas. No, I'm sorry. All Nagas, all of Israel. The land of the great Khan. Saracens here. Lost tribes of Israel. They're searching in the red thread, right? For the Saracens here. That looks just like any naga on any block, in any hood, in any ghetto where the Jews are supposed to be, the ghettos, you know. Yeah, we're talking to Hebrews, though. Talking Clan Ross, right? Clan C. All Andreas, they say. Okay. We'll be back. The Mongols were descendants of the Magi. Well, let's talk about Because they're just repudiating. But are they repealing? Are they revoking, right? Repudiate just means they cast it away, you know, but to revoke something is like you are reversing everything. We want these hijacks to reverse everything, but we can't rely on them to save us. Some people say, well, okay, what we got to do? Go to the courthouses, boss. That's not your savior. Your paperwork. The most high. <laughs> You don't need no courthouses to give you nothing. They're going to have to do it. They're going to have to come out. They're going to have to come out. You're going to just, just be a witness, man. That don't mean do nothing. That means you start popping off. You start being independent. You know, it's possible. You know what I'm saying? And definitely, you know, work these hijacks for everything. They owe you for sure, for sure. You know, you got your UCCs. You popping off. You, got, you, you doing your thing. Pop off, man. I'm just saying. We ain't going to need none of that. <laughs> we ain't going to need none of that. Because they are going to have to reverse this. What's the reverse of invading you? <laughs> Getting off your land, giving you everything. Right? <laughs> What's the reverse of capturing you? Well, can they give you back everybody that they captured and vanquished, man? So I guess certain things they can't reverse. I guess... I guess Jabroni here is right. All he can do is repudiate, you know. I guess that's all they can do is cast it away because they really can't reverse all this slaughter and thievery, all the bloodshed. So I guess that's all you. I guess that's all they can do. God. Well, the car even today, are repudiating the oral tradition of the source of, as a source of divine law. So 
they're casting away, at least they're casting away <laughs> um, a lot of this ism hijack. You know, this is these are really the ops to the Jewish, <laughs> the Jewish religion. You know what I mean? The car, the cariots, the the cariism is really the opposition. You know, because they say, man, you better start reading. What you gonna read? You gotta read. You know this Tanakh, man. You know what I'm saying? They, you gotta read the Torah. We ain't gonna read that Talmud. They dismissed the Talmud as man-made law, right? Substituted for the God-given Torah. They still popping off the car of the day, man. That's what we say. Of course, it's isn't, you know. But at least I'm just saying there's more to the car than meets the eye of what they always give us, right? This car, this <laughs> this car of his, then it's the car of Katai and the Karians. Now it says these Karians were related to the Namans. Okay? Another Mongolian or great one, right? The shepherd tribe and paid tribute to their ruler Korkan or Gorkan. They were also Nestorian Christians. Nestor, old king renowned for wise counsel. How many times we got to get Nestor? <laughs> We get it and then they uh, take the legs down and we got to find it again. Man, it's crazy, man. Nestor. Old King Renown for Wise Council. I just spoke Council. Oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> Talk about it like here we go again. <laughs> Cause they also that was one of the of the Greek. Oh, this is the Greek flow. And then that's their phantom and duplication. You know what I'm saying? Uh oh. Well we got the Doug the Douglas Harper etymology. Okay, time battle. You know, it's, it's good to search again in 2023. Yeah, let's get that bigger. I got to save this, man. I got to save it. got to save it. At least save the link. That's true, okay. Y'all got to save it because they're going to keep bringing, taking it down. <laughs> so when they're talking this story in Christian, the reason why they say Nestor is because it's a name for old king renowned for wise council. And then they go to Greek, right? Right, now now they got their, their Greek mythos, but it connected to an old wise con. This is the connection. That's why they're saying they're not Christians. They're connected to an old king renowned for wise council. Con. You know, we, we just saying clear. While they pop off their car is. So they were also Nestorian Christians. Okay. Old king, renowned for wise counsel, right? We're talking about the Magi. Didn't it say that these people were related to the Magi? To chronology, right? The Mongols were descended from the Magi. Then they try to write in their version of the Magi. Paying uh, uh, obeisance to baby Jesus in the New Testament. Nah, man. That's, that, that's them symbolically making all the Magi bow down to Christ, right? Bow down to Christianity by putting that in the New Testament. Oh, the Magi came and bowed down to baby Jesus. That means that he represents all the Magi, right? <laughs> all the Mongol, all the great ones that were not bowing down to your hijack, nor did you convert these Mongols, whether even... Some maybe some of Genghis' people, I don't know, man, but they they couldn't convert. I mean, they, they got books talking about how they were trying to convert Batu Khan and them and couldn't even convert them. So you think they converted the Israelites? They've been trying to do that because you are the Native American, right? They've been trying to convert you the whole time, right? See all these churches on your corner, man? See all these churches on your corner? They still trying to convert the Mongol. They still trying to convert the Native American, right? 
Let's go. They're still trying to convert the Israel. These are Magi. These are the cons. King David is the great con. Who, who, who? <laughs> it's Prester John of the Indies who moves to Ethiopia. Which one, man? Because that's a general term. Love to Ronald Sanders, man. You know, lost tries and promised land. Let's go. The Magi flow. So these Magi are these old, are connected with this old king right now for wide council, right? We just got King David of Israel, right? Is the great Khan. That is the Magi, right? That is the Nestor, old king, renowned for wise counsel, renowned for having mama with him, right? David got mama with him, right? All throughout the script, David got mama with him, right? Okay, all right. Solomon got mama. Psalms chapter 4, Solomon is telling you the importance of rocking with Amah, how that's bringing you life, right? Okay, we're talking magi. Solomon got the magical rings and all that too, right? We're talking magi. We're talking magic, right? <laughs> God. So in that vicinity, were considered the countrymen of Preston John. So we're talking about these chariots are the countrymen. The car are the countrymen of Preston John. So when they give you car later, just give you car means black. Car are the countrymen of Preston John. The prince of the car is Unk Khan. <laughs> Come on. Unk is also Ong. Ong means king. Wong means king. John is Ong, is Unk, is all John, right? Preston John is Ankh, is Ong, is Wong. Khan, Wong Khan, Priest King, Melchizedek, whatever language you speak. The Prince of the Karians, Ong Khan, was in 1202, completely subject to the superior power of Genghis Khan. Wow. So they straight up telling you the hijack came in 1202. But before that, he's rocking as the Khan, as the Prince of the Karian. Now they became subject to Genghis Khan in 1202, who meanwhile was the friendliest on the friendliest terms with his family, thus giving the Karia a certain amount of independence. Marco Polo speaks of Unk Khan as the great prince who was called Preston John, the whole world speaking of his great power. 1229, the celebrated missionary John of Monte Carlo converted an historian prince belonging to this tribe who afterwards served mass for him. So now he got him a convert. And yet neither he nor the other missionaries who at this time were trying to convert the Mongol princes, right? So you always hear about them trying to convert the Indians. You see, you know they try to convert us, right? <laughs> On our own land. But they've been trying to convert the gray ones, the Mongols. So Genghis was hijacking the press right away. What are now they're calling him Preston John? But either way, this Ong Khan is the OG. And now back back in and up, they had risen up against their own ruler, because it you know uh, uh King David, you know what I'm saying, had complete rulership at this time, you know what I mean? So they got a whole story about that and um Preston John Legend and Sources, man. I love the Aqua type battle in the battle family. Get the full drop in the drop library at 432thedrop.com. But after this murder took place, after the murder of their ruler, the Tartar set about destroying the people. So now we got this subjection happening. And this is why, like, after 1202, there's a lot of confusion between when they talk Preston John or King David, if they're talking about Genghis Khan or if they're talking about the actual King David. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody is hiding in somebody else's tent, taking their titles, <laughs> taking the Khan title, the George title, the David title, the Preston title, man, taking everything. So. And yet, 
Let's pick it up from here. And yet neither he nor the other missionaries who at this time were trying to convert the Mongolian princes of Upper Asia. Where's Asia? Pay much attention to the extravagant embellishments of the legend. One of these missionaries, or, or Dorica's de Foro, Julie, wrote that not a hundred part of the things related to Presser John were true. For centuries, the Prince of Caria was looking upon, looked upon as the Presser John of, of the legend. So they're looking everywhere. They're looking everywhere. They're looking at the Prince of Korai, okay? We got to look at the Prince of Korai too then. The Papal Librarian Asamani and the geographer Ritter justified the scientific hypothesis by a mass of original documents. Everyone's looking for the Prester, even the Papal Librarian. <laughs> they all looking. I mean, this lets you know how important this investigation is. He got original documents to back up his thesis connecting President John with the Prince of Korea. Okay. Sound like Korea. Whoa. Carry. Carry it. Karkatai. Korea. Ping. Pow. <laughs> Body bag for the illusion. We already connected China with the Kana flow. We know where China is, man. <laughs> We connected Japan with the Zapangu Kapangu flow. Now, officially, we have a Korea carrier connection. We know where the carriers are and the land of the car. Right? So, all right. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. All day. All day. <laughs> it is undoubtedly true that this is the explanation of the legend. Many of the peculiar peculiarities are for clearly brought out example the Sakor Doto character of the Hebrew of the hero for according to Rebucus the historians of that locality were accustomed to delicate to the priesthood even or excuse me dedicate to the priesthood even the children of their cradle man, stop it, man. the main point however is still unexplained namely the origin <laughs> of the legend, the account of Rubrukis, however carefully considered, supports the Oppert Zarnik hypothesis and elucidates the transition of the legend from the Karakatai to the Korea. We didn't really connect that ourselves. Everything's a duplicate, man, over there, man. So China is really Kana, Kana, you know what I'm saying? There is no ch in our language or their language. It's not ch, it's a hard k. It's ka, kana, kenna, kana. Then you got the car katai connection, right? And now you got the Korea car connection. The point is, man, there's more than meets eye when you talk in car. And I'll get back on that document, man. I'm just making my way back to Mount Ararat, man. <laughs> making my way back to Mount Ararat, man. You can't just say car, man. Uh, it means black. It means so much, man. It means so much. You're talking to Carl Katai Press the job. <clears throat> Carl Katai. It's been all kind of ways. K H I. T A Y. Stop playing with us on this card talk, man. It's right in our Facebook. Encyclopedia.com. It don't matter, man. You're going to find us in Encyclopedias, Britannicas. You're going to find Press the John, man. You're going to find King David. It's not hard to find when you know what you're looking for. Let's go. Let go. Legendary ruler of a Christian king. Nah, they just said in the story. Stop playing old king renowned for God's castle. The name Presta the Priest John appears first 1145 in the Chronicle of Otto Friesling, where John is described as a Nestorian. 
<laughs> king reigning in the Far East beyond Persia and Armenia. The vanquisher of the Muslim king. This is why they mad, son. This is why they mad. We know we're just trying to pop off on Christians and Muslims. We're just trying to say that this Hebrew priest king wanted all the smoke, right? Because he was representing this biblical heritage. You know what I'm saying? He was representing the heritage of Hawaii. He was representing the heritage of King David. He was representing the covenant. And everybody was covetous for the covenant. Everybody wanted the promised land. Is the Christian and the Muslim fighting for the promised land or are they working together, <laughs> confederate, to get the promised land? This is why they have so much unity uh, behind the scenes today. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. This priest came Preston, right? It's known as the vanquisher of this Islam Muslim situation, right? Not because he's just anti, you know, uh, black people. No, he, he, he's anti anybody pushing these Atlantean gods, throwing stones at Merculus, rocking with Mercury, rocking with Thoth, Tahuti, rocking with this Atlantean hijack. It's an ancient frequency war. Alchemical dragon, alchemical serpent. He's rocking against the serpent. You can't be a true Mongol or true Moor if you're not truly great. And you ain't getting no greater than the creator of all. <laughs> Hawa, you ain't getting no greater than Hawa. So you don't get no greater than Hawa's code. Rule number one, put no power before me. <laughs> yeah, all these rituals and pagans. And all, you know, it was paganism on both sides trying to attack trying to bring down and convert the great Khan, right? The great Mongol. But he's over there wanting all the smoke. He's vanquishing these Muslim kings. He's vanquishing these so-called Christians trying to find him. They coming over there looking, they ain't returning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's at war with all the hijack. That's why he's the most sought, at, sought, at, sought after, but yet Swept under the rug, someone you never heard in all your history books, all your lessons. 99% of us never heard of present time. But we celebrate Black History Month, the shortest month of the entire year. Get slapped in the face every month looking for black history. You ain't looking for great history. That's the difference. It should be great history month because you are the great. You are the more, right? You are the Mongol. You're the true great. Now, the true great is vanquishing. These other powers, man. And this is why they mad. Because their sultans were paying tribute to him, to the Preston. This is why Genghis was mad. He was tired of paying tribute to David. But David is the head, not the tail, right? So this is, a, this is the order <laughs> of the tribes here on this earth. They're covetous of that order. They'd rather be out of order and be destroyed. They would rather destruction than just be in order. If they get in order, everybody's in Shalawan. Hawaii's covenants with Hawaii's peoples. I know that might be a tough blow to all those who say, well, everybody's God's people. No, the creator's tribal. <laughs> but if you're for the tribe, then Hawaii could be for you. If you fight against the wave, that water's going to wash you up. That's the, the most simple, simplistic way of putting it for you, man, when you're surfing away with that memsos. Preston John is the vanquisher of the Muslim kings of Iran, Persia, right? Where's Persia? Where's Parius? And where's Parias? Huh? Where's Mexico? When I say Persia, I want you to think Mexico, right? When I say Korea, I want you to think, I want you to think Caria, man, Carians, man, <laughs> all right? When, I, when, you, when you hear China, I want you to think Cathay, right? I want you to think Cathay. I want you to take it all the way back home. To Cathay, right back home to India, Superior Boss. Every time. Because Cathay and China are right in your face, Boss.
and so is Florida and Mexico. And in the other maps with Asia, it says Paris or Paris or per Persia, <laughs> right here with Mexico is. Oh yeah, boss. If you put the Persian history in India Superior, you might be pink powering all over the place. Pink powering all over the place. All right. It's getting too good. All right. <laughs> Repudiates, man. <laughs> it's crazy, man, man. They over here repudiating stuff, man. But they ain't gonna give it back. They ain't gonna reverse nothing. Okay, perfect, perfect. We right where we want to be. We got them right where we want them. So it was hoped that he would come to the aid of the Holy Land. For who? For the Christians? See, they were calling him a Christian just so that they can, like, get some moral joy happening and thinking that they had some savior out there that's going to help them fight against the Muslim. That's the story. But I think they were really working together, the Muslim and the Christian, to find the Prester and to conquer the Holy Land. That's all they both wanted. <laughs> The victory alluded to here was actually that of the Khan of the Karakata over the Sejuk, king of Persia. This is why they mad. Just like David in the script was giving Moabite all they can handle, right? <laughs> giving Moab all, all types of issues, right? David was giving them all types of issues in the scriptures. President John was giving them all kinds of issues right here in history, right? But you're just off by 1,800 years, <laughs> from here to the Bible, because that's how far Scaliger and Batavius push back time. Now you pick it up in the 12th century, now you pick it up with the real histories with Anatoly for the was breaking down and that they pushed the history from the 1200s, really after the 900s up into the 1500s, 1600s was the real history and then they pushed it back a thousand years. To you, you think it's happening in the early ADs, BCs. But the car is popping off right here in the 12th century, right? But that name, Preston John, was certainly in use prior to 1141. And doubtless designated the Christian Empire, Emperor of Ethiopia, which one whose existence was vaguely known. Everything's vague to the hijack in Palestine. Okay. Vague. After the victory of 1141, the Christian West tended to localize the kingdom of Preston John in the Indies. Ethiopia or Indies, man? Which one? <laughs> An apocryphal letter widely disseminated from 1165 on from this ruler to the Byzantine Emperor Emmanuel I. Comnenus made Preston John the guardian of the tomb of the Apostle Thomas. Yeah, we're just talking India, but we ain't talking that New Testament. Thomas, we're talking Tau, <laughs> Tau of Heva, right? Like the cities of gold. Love to the bro, Dizzle, Fitty. Now check this out. Third, 13th century, John's name was interspersed throughout the West information on the Mongol conquest. A text disseminated circa 1220 made Genghis Khan under the name King David. Oh, yeah. 1220, right? I told you after 1202, look out, look out. Genghis Khan is now under the name King David, letting you know that King David is real either way. <laughs> Even if Genghis Khan is King David, King David is real. We just got to figure out the story, get the story straight. But the fact that Genghis Khan and the Tatars went to war against David in 1202, murdered him and his dad, they say, took the title David, took the title Khan, Man, to 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 title Preston, right? So this this makes it all real. Cause no one's questioning the reality of Genghis Khan. No one's saying Genghis Khan is a man. So many people today say they got bloodline back to Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan can't be myth. How many people with the last name Khan running around here now, right? But are they the real Khan? They got a bunch of Chan, C H A Ns, but are they the real Chan? 
Khan. <laughs> Under the name Genghis Khan, the son of Prester John. Whoa. So here's their story. So a text, a text disseminated 1220. Man, Genghis Khan, under the name King David, the son of Preston John, <laughs> and a Christian as well. Stop the capery, because never in the history of Cappadocia, man. <laughs> Later, it was supposed by some that Genghis Khan had destroyed the kingdom of Preston John. Right. You see, my nigga, we can't make this stuff up. Huh? This is your history, because these are black people, right? These are melanated cons. But who's the real con? Con. If we call ourselves Americans, American, you might want to know who the con is. All my indigenous nagas, I see you popping off. You're proud to be indigenous nagas. Autochthonous nagas. In India Superior, but do you know you're in India Superior? In the Far East? You know this is land of the great con? I know you've been running from the Bible, but it seems to be where the biblical history is taking place. And it ain't no myth. So you're going to have to deal with your fears of looking at the scriptures because you're going to have to go up and get the babies out the bathwater like everybody else got to. You're going to have to keep the cold like everybody else got to. Because right now you're codeless. You can make up your phony codes and your own indigenous codes, but my nugget is only one code. If you want the creator to protect you, and give you true salvation <laughs> from all hijacked frequency. You got to stop putting a power before your power and be M-H-O-E, K-T-C. So you can get that water and stay dripping in that man's soul. Now we're talking Kondawi. You got to follow the code. You got to follow the order. Your indigenous Indianness is not going to save you. Ain't never saved you. Your Indian tribe ain't never saved you. Being out of code has taken you down every time. It's not about proving that you're an Israelite. It's about keeping the code and knowing that Israel exists. I don't care if I'm an Edomite. I don't care if I'm an Ammonite. I don't care if I'm a Jebusite. You know what? I'm a Jebusite that keeps the code and wakes up the code keepers. I'll, I'll be that. How about that? I'll, I don't have the hat. I don't need the inheritance of something that's not mine. I truly believe that I'll have enough. <laughs> and that's all I can ever ask for is enough, man, for my people, for my family. Can you dig it? Stop being covetous about having everybody's things. What? I mean, you know, you can't be that insecure, man. Just be sure that you in the goods if you in the goods. That's all we got to say about that. If you're in the goods, you're in the goods. Don't be in the bads, because once you're in the bads, you might never be in the goods again, man. Genghis Khan stole the Khan. Now he's under the name Khan Dawi. The son of Preston John. Yeah, right. But is he the adopted foster son, you know, because him and Genghis Khan's dad was super tight. You know, he would be like a nephew, treated like a son. Okay. Later, it was supposed that Genghis Khan had destroyed the kingdom of Preston John. Was that his whole goal was to take down the Preston, Preston's kingdom, take out the promised land? Well, it appears Genghis Khan's goal was the same as the Christian's goal in invading us. It's the same as this 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 more and more, you know, situation This this, uh, you know, Muslim goal, you know, what I'm saying of making this the Muslim promised land. <laughs> nah, man, this ain't Atlantis, man. You move with permission of the Pharaoh. These are the Hebrew priests, kings and queens. You're going to have to put some respect <laughs> on the code if you're going to represent and be a true uh, Arab proper. A rabbi is an Arab. A rabbi, you know what I'm saying? Cold keep. You got to really rock with Hawaii only. You know what I'm saying? You can't be on no play play, man. You can't be trying to squeeze your way into this blessing, man. It don't work like that. You've inherited lies. Our grandfathers, our grandmothers inherited lies, man. They taught us about all this stuff, man. <laughs> all these hijacks. We got to 
you know, give them a hive at the same time we're waking up. Right. So when all the secrets are being revealed, you got to realize that the board you were standing in is going to get flipped over. Everything you thought was this east is going to be west. Every Everything you thought was up is going to be down. Like everything is going to be flipped. You got to put your story back together. So the Genghis Khan take out the kingdom of the Preston, a kingdom identified by some <clears throat> Shalak with that of one of the Christian peoples in Central Asia. Cut it, man. I'm going to skip over the Christian talk for now on, man. It's just, it's just to distract us because we know we ain't talking about no JC. <laughs> and nah, man. We're talking about Khan David. King David ain't no Christian, man. Cut the malarkey, man. All right? He ain't praying to JC in Psalms 18. He's praying to the creator only. They're just trying to hijack him because he's part of the Christian Bible. But in the Christian Bible is a part of the Tanakh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then a slither of that New Testament is what they want to lean on. Because everything's around the new hero, the new romance with JC. He's the sacrifice. Nah, nigga, you were sacrificed. Israel was sacrificed for our own sins, for our own transgressions. We didn't need no one to take the L for us. We had to take it. What are you talking about? We still taking it. Jay-Z got <laughs> Jay-Z. Jay-Z got sacrificed for you, but you still are getting murdered today, right? But because of the blood of Jay-Z, I could be redeemed. Man, because you keep the code, you get redeemed. How come he didn't teach that? Keep the code and get redeemed. I mean, if a while wants to, you know, it's case by case, you know, depending on what you have contributed to. It might not be too late for some of your hijacks, but a lot of you jabronis have gone too far, man. <laughs> we in the press the flow. Let's go, man. We out of here, man. We out of here, man. By the time we get to the press the flow, you know you've gone too far. You know it's time to pay up. The paybacks and the playback, man. <laughs> we on a war path, man. We on a war path, man. It's a frequency war. Price is going down. Can't buy your way out of this. The price is going up, high Jack. It's all happening, man. Shout wild to the con. The real con. The real a rat. You dead. Ah. Yeah, we're talking to carry it. Somebody left the comment and say, yeah, some. Okay, okay. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. I'm still talking trees, man. I'm still talking mulberry trees. I just have to explain this car thing one more time. Because they're just going to give us a car. And they ain't going to tell us all this history connected with Preston John, connected with the car. They're just going to slide through the car. You can't slide through car. You can't slide through the car. Not when they still are practicing a remnant where they are repudiating the Talmud today. So whatever they are, they're getting a remnant of being hijacked free. <laughs> right? They, I'm not saying they are, but part of their flow is to repudiate, cast away, dismiss <laughs> whatever they bring in outside of the law, right? The code. They're kind of hijacked code keepers, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Okay. Repudiate. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, okay. Oh yeah. Go back. <laughs> Been too good, man. I'm, I'm all over the place. All right. So look, man. These cards, these car or the namings, and by other believe. Others believe to be a kingdom located in India, and that's why I got the map up. I knew they were going to go there so we could say which one, boss, because Florida, Mexico, India, superior. India going once, another India going twice. And that's right by China, Mexico, Cathay. So Karakatai is Cathay, spelled with a C or a K. Cathay is Cathay. Cathay is Cathay. Come. 
The R means rig, regnum, like a kingdom, regnum. You know what I'm saying? So this mangi regnum, we talked about that. It goes back to the, the mangu, the manku. You know what I'm saying? These are tribes of the Inca, which, you know, could or could not. The tribe, you know, the, the jury is out if that's part of Genghis Khan's connection as well. This Inca flow, uh, this manku could be the Batu Khan lineage under Mangi. All right. That's something to think about, man. But we're talking Cathay and it's all happening in India Superior. Then you got Tangu, where we got out the book Swords of the East, that this is where the first war was happening between Genghis Khan and Preston China and Tangu. And I said, damn, it's right here on the map of North America. I mean, India Superior. So we already home. <laughs> you just had to know what you was looking for, searching for. The Kari, believed to be a kingdom located in India. That makes sense now, right? The latter group further believed that the kingdom had escaped the Mongol conquest thanks to the miraculous intervention of the three royal magi or wise men whose heir, Preston John, was reputed to be. Okay. So Preston John is the heir of all these magi, right? He's the heir of the wise man. <laughs> He's the Nestor. He's the Nestor. What does Nestor mean? Old king renowned for wise counsel. So they call him a Nestorian Christian. Press is all about the Holy Land. Back to the medieval, uh, so-called medieval tales, right, containing the principal incidents. I get it a little smaller so I can get it all. So this wild medieval tale contains the principal incidents of the long Alexander legend. This letter is probably an historian forgery, right, Nestor forgery. From that time, it is believed that a Christian kingdom existed in the Far East or in the heart of Asia. <laughs> Again, get the drive. Where's Asia? All right. So they're just talking America. They're just talking any superior. The legend furnished a wealth of material for the poets, writers, explorers. Uh, John de Manival, Germany, Wolfram van Etchenbach. He writes this whole romance. Look, shout out to the Templar. Romance just means hero. You know, in etymology, it's not about love. It's about a hero. Okay, so these romances are about a hero. This Parzival connects this Holy Grail to Preston John. Was the first to unite the legend of the Holy Grail with the history of Preston John. You don't think Preston John is important? This is not a Christian Holy Grail. Remember, they say Preston John's over here, you know, giving the Muslims work. The Christian's looking for him. He ain't helping them. This is a Hebrew priest king. The Holy Grail is connected with the Solomon David flow, right? It's connected with Israel. The Holy Grail is about you. It's not about no Christian religion or Muslim religion. The Holy Grail, my nag, is about you. You are the function. What's the function of the Grail? It's about uniting the tribes, right? Uniting, uniting the Khan dynasty once again. Call him in a story. Yeah, I'm going to get back in this, man, since this is going on. Yeah, the car. What is talking car? Car Katai. And the Katai is Cathay, spelled with the K H. Or spelled just with the C A T. Katai, Cathay, Katai. Right in your face, right here in North America, right? All right. All right. And so, point is, before I get back to this error flow and my tree drop, <laughs> we're talking about the roots, so we got to be talking about the tree. Con. They say the root word of car line is car. Car means black. That's it. So, we got a whole 
lesson on car. <laughs> man, I had to give it to you, man. One, one more good time for Preston 120. In case, this, in case this is your first time surfing away. A car means car. Now back to Mount Air. Right? <laughs> God, God. He like drop, man. It's out of his, you know, car, car, time mind, man. I mean, I, I got to be, man. I got to get out there, mind ball. Let's get it from here. Mount Ararat in Turkey is this snow capped inactive volcano. You think Hawaii had him land on a damn volcano, man? <laughs> All right, man. Just think about it, man. Fits the biblical description of this North Carolina flow. Car, right? <laughs> I'm just back to the car. So whether you're talking North Carolina, South Carolina. You're just talking to Car, Katai. You're still talking to land of the Preston. Still talking to land of the Preston. Now, what else are we talking about? All right, so priest came. We're talking Noah. We can't talk David if we ain't talking Noah, right? I mean, well, you we know David, right? All right. Rested on Mount Ararat's mountains, which again, that's a, this is a plural. It's not just one Mount Ararat, it's the mountains. So this could be anywhere, whether we're talking Virginia, the mountains, however long this mountain range is flowing with. Okay. And they got searches for this mountain popping off. The last time. Searching for Noah Ark have been reported since antiquity. So we could definitely keep the search going. We don't have to just concede to their previous searches in 2023, right? We can have our own search for the Prester. For Noah, who is a prester, right? This is the Preston investigation. It got to include Priest King Noah, right? So they've been searching since antiquity as ancient scholars sought to affirm the historicity of the Genesis flood narrative by citing accounts of relics recovered from the ark. Well, they're trying to get some veracity to the story, but they're not going to give you the actual truth <laughs> they're going to keep putting you in the Middle East they're going to save you from Africa when you were just found here right it says the book of Jubilee specifies a particular about naming it Lubar now is this getting even more specific you know, I've never searched for a Lubar about before. I'm not going to go crazy right now, but I will put it to the side. And who knows if we can find a Lubar. And, uh, you know, <laughs> North Carolina. I mean, why not? Let's go crazy, man. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. It's getting kind of crazy. How would they spell Ubar today? Let me take the extra stuff off this thing. Ubar. Nah. Nah, man. Say it ain't so, man. <laughs> I ain't the only one because I can tell people have been searching for this Labar situation. Oh, look at us, man. We, we popping up right now, man. We in the algorithm, man. <laughs> Landing on Labar, one of the mountains of error.
Labor Mountain? Nah, they wouldn't do that, man. They wouldn't turn it to Labor Mountain. With that. <laughs> Is there a Labor Mountain, man? I'd be crazy. Oh, man. <laughs> Black Mountain, man. It must be Black Mountain. That's funny. That'd be crazy. There's a labor mountain. <laughs> Told you, I, I ain't gonna go crazy. I ain't gonna go crazy. Labor mountain. A bar. Give me no labor, man. All right, all right, all right. Just check it. La bar. <laughs> I said maybe they spelled it the French way. Labor's Mountain. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, let me go back to the bar. Told y'all I'll be popping off, man. Next time I check Virginia, man, just just cause uh, I think Aqua Todd say I, I think she landed on the Virginia side. Hmm. This map shows. Popularity of the name of the bar. Names that org they have a job, man. Okay. They on that play play too. Okay, okay, okay. Just look at that amount of labor, man. <laughs> if there's a amount of labor, I'll go go crazy. Crazy songs. Mount Lubar. Virginia. It's some real recon of real time, man. Just throwing out some idea. Lunar mountains, huh? Somebody said one ladder rule drop. <laughs> I got the lunar mountains. Man, Let's dig on this book of Jubilees, man. We're searching for Mount Ararat. It's being called all my things. Cardu. Labar. Let's get that a little bigger.
Come on, hijack. So play. This article argues this is from the uh, journals. The four places that belong to the Lord, Jubilees 4, chapter 26, or verse 26. This article argues that the original name for the mountain on which Enoch made his offering in Eden was the mountain of incense. And that it is the first mountain in uh, chapter 4, 26, the mountain of Eden, paradise, are the same mountain. The second mountain is 426, the mountain of the east is Mount Labar, where the ark landed at the end of the flood where Noah lived unto his death. So wherever this mountain is, man, Noah lived there unto his death. Very important. They say Mount uh, Nebo is connected with Moses' death, even though he <laughs> uh, was never abated, right? His life force was never lessened according to Deut Deuteronomy 34. His eyes were never dim. <laughs> but now we have a connection with Noah and the mountain that he uh, lived, you know what I'm saying, uh, until his death, supposedly. All right? So all four mountains are placed where God had or would specifically or specially reveal himself to chosen individuals and for that reason were holy to Hawaii. <laughs> Mount Labar, all right. This is the Targum, calls it Cardu. I mean, man, so we got a lot of different names that you can try to connect with the Carolina flow, or the Virginia flow. Whether you're looking up the bar, whether you're looking up the car, do flow. Just to get some more substantiating recon around this thing. There's a website called aboutlabar.com. All, right. <laughs> All about Labar. Did you know? Did you know? All right. The name Labar seems to date back more than 4,000 years. Dead Sea Scrolls. The mountain is named Mount Labar. The Dead Sea Scrolls under A, Tales of the Patriarchs. Noah describes his family. Then I began to cultivate the earth together with all my sons. I planted a vineyard, a large vineyard at Mount Labar. Dead Sea Scroll Fragment P267. The vision of Daniel. Unfortunately, these fragments only hint at them. Daniel gives an account of the history of Israel. Something after the flood. Noah from something Labar. Something city. Something a tower. Something height. Uh, something the tower. And he said All right, a lot of fragments. But another mention of Labar with the Daniel. Vision of Daniel flow. Book of Jubilees. The following references are made of Mount Labar, chapter 5, the ark went and rested at the top of Labar, one of the mountains of Ararat. Ah. 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 <laughs> okay. Hold up, man. So, whereas Genesis is only going to just pretty much, you know, let's get back to the you know, KJVs and New International Version. They say it came to the rest on the mountains of air, right? It don't give a specific place, is what we said. It's very general, right? Mountains of air, right? KJV, KJV, <laughs> mountains of air, right? And Jubilees specifically says, and the ark went and rested on the top of Labar. One of the mountains of Ararat. In the seventh week and week of the first year thereof, in this jubilee, Noah planted vines on a mountain on which the ark had rested, named Labar. Hmm. And Labar spelled backwards is Rebel, Rabble, <laughs> Rebel, 
Almost sound like rebel, man. Rebel, man. <laughs> All right, man. One of the arid mountains, and they produced fruit in the fourth year. Interesting. Now, it also, <laughs> Labar backwards also spells Rob Bull, man. So, you know, what's it got to do with the Rob Bull? You know what I'm saying? What, what happened there, man? You know, <laughs> how did they hijack you, man? Huh? Huh? Question for another day. So a lot of these Labar flows is popping up. A lot of Labars, man. And it is worth noting, man. It is worth noting. According to Britannica.com, you know, we live like list of cities in North Carolina. It could be something. It could be nothing. <laughs> I'm really trying to stretch to get this Labar flow going, but Here's here's what could be a hard hit. <laughs> a little something called Lumberton. 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 Right. All right. All right. Labar Town. Labar Town. I don't know. Lumberton. Could Lumber be Labar? I don't know. They just added an M in there, right? Without the M, it's just Labar. Labar. They made it Lumberton, man. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, they got Lumberton. They got Moorhead. You know, remember they talked about Stonehead. You know what I mean? They got a Moorhead. Or, or is it the head of a Moor on the stone? You know what I mean? It's a lot of interest. They got, they got Nog's head, man. They got the head of the Naga, man. <laughs> All happening. I'm just looking at Lumberton first. Labar, man, Labar, right? Okay, okay. Is Labar lumbered? I don't know, man. Could be something, could be nothing. Huh. On the Lumber or Lumbee River. Lumbee? So lumber just ain't standing for no, you know, just lumbering. You know, this is the lumbee. The lumbee. Of course, they're going to tie it to their economic development based on lumbering, tobacco curing, textile, apparel, and all that. Pembroke, 10 miles northwest, is the center of the Indian settlement. Huh? The Croton, so called Lumbee Indian settlement. It seems like it was an important area to the Indians that had it as a centerpiece there. All right, man. A lot of Nagas were centered around this Lumbee situation. And was the Lumbee or Lumber got to do with the bar? I don't know, man. It's just, I'm just saying it could be something, man. It could be nothing. <laughs> let's keep going. All right, let's have some fun. We just talking Jamoki, where they're saying this, where adventure begins. This is the area that adventure began. <laughs> Was Noah pulled up? Is this a uh, what how far this is from Lumber, Lumberton, man. Jimmyoki. <clears throat> how far is Jamioki Campground? From Lumberton, North Carolina. Things that make you go, hmm. Got a couple.
couple hour dip. Conquer. So Mount Ararat, you know, was called Jamal Key. That's what the Cherokee called it. It wasn't just related to this one campground. The whole thing was Jamalki. <laughs> um, which meant the great guide. The great guide. Just trying to get some orientation. Okay. Getting a biblical flow popping off in real time. And remember, man, uh, Mount Gilead is also <laughs> North Carolina, too. Let's keep going. We know we got a Gilead you though. You know, we know that. Pilot Mountain, now called Pilot Mountain. And there's a trail called the Jamoki Trail. Leads back to the base of Big Pinnacle, right? Okay. Hanging Rock State Park, bunch of state parks. We're talking Mount Airy, but they're not going to say Ararat, right? They're not going to say Ararat, but they will say Airy. They'll say Lime, but they won't say Jerusalem, you know what I mean? <laughs> remember the SAR is a car, right? <laughs> and we just been talking a car. We just talking car, right? Car Katai, same thing. The SAR Town Mountains are the car town mountains, huh? Yeah, and very interesting, man. It's metamorphic quartzite. It's a whole recon into itself. Monondock, isolated, rock hill, nah, bridge, small mountain that rises abruptly from a gently sloping, virtually level surrounding plain. <laughs> yeah, I see. Just like that. Nice little landing strip, huh? We're gonna read more about pilot read more about pilot mountain. Uh, you know, hear them talk about it. Hear them talk about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how they were mystified by this area. And how this could be a very mystical spot. And again, the Sara Native Americans, the region's earliest known inhabitants, called the mountain Jimoki. So it was just a trail. And the entire mountain was called Jimoki. What is metamorphic quartzite? That's just a whole nother high pop offness, you know. Did Hawa have Noah pull up on metamorphic quartzite? 2,421 2, feet above sea level. At that time, would have been sea level with the flood. Okay. Talking North Carolina. Are, which are the car, and we're talking car lighter, we're talking car katai, right? Car katai. Car katai. <laughs> and we're talking press the job. Vanquisher of all hijacks raising against the creator's tribe. Priest of India Superior. The Nestor. The Khan, the great Khan of the car, right? The great Khan of the Sar. <laughs> the great Khan of the Sar. The great Khan of the Sar Sin. Huh? 
Uh, so the sorrow is the car and the car is the sorrow saying Sarah's son. We're talking Abraham and Sarah's son. <laughs> We're talking Rus and Rush. Okay, all right. All right, we back. Because King David of Israel is equated to the great Khan. This one known as Prester John of India Superior. The great Khan. Yeah. It's the great Khan of the Sar. The great Khan of the Sar Sin. The great Khan of the Car. Or how they say it again. The car of Katana. Because the car is the sorrow. Oh, it just means black, boss. Oh, man, it means so much more. Because <laughs> you're talking Cathay. And Cathay is the pure land or promised land. And that is regnum, which means this is a kingdom. <laughs> the kingdom of Cathay are ruled by the car or Sar or Sar Sin. Kingdom of Cathay is ruled by the Sar Sin, <laughs> which is first found in Cathness or Cathay. And we're still just talking lost tribes of Israel, boss. We still talking lost tribes of Israel. And you need to understand that the king of Israel, King David, is the great Khan. The great Khan of Cathay, Preston John. Is the great Khan. Khan of the car. And the Sar is the car. And we're talking Sar Town, which is just talking about Pilot Mountain in North Carolina. Car. Airy, Area. Let's go. Now, here's where it gets fun, man. Here's where it gets fun. The Jamoki Trail leads around the base of the big pinnacle, right? All right. The Ledge Spring Trail goes past a large picnic area down along the ridge crest. It's lower loop back up past a small perennial spring. Ooh, got that mem sauce. Follows a long cliff that is a popular location for rock climbing. All right, so you go around these spring trails and now it connects to the mountains, to the sea, and the Sartan. Town trails, all right, which go to the hanging rock. <clears throat> a lot of interesting things, right? They got hanging rocks, they got stone heads. <laughs> and then we clicked on mountains to see, right? I said, What's this mountains to see? Like, you know. and the mount, mountains to see led us to the clean man's dome. We said, damn, well, what's the clean man's dog? <laughs> We're just talking, you know, North Carolina. Now, the clean man's dome is a mountain in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina in the southeast United States. Its name in Cherokee is Kauai or Kauai. Huh. And we started getting definitions. But they just let us kind of right there. You know, I I went to other definitions. I said, man, they just say mulberry tree. I didn't really slow it down, right? Mulberry place connects to mulberry tree. They're going to connect us with the Smoky Mountains. And they're going to connect us with the Appalachian Trail. Other than our brother, uh, uh, you know. Natural by law, man, because that Appalachian drop, man, all his drop is on supreme fire, supreme ether happening at natural by law, man. Go 
get the drop. Make sure you tune in there at 432thedrop.com to the naturalist to get the drop. Appalachia, man. <laughs> all right, all right. So it was interesting to us because we said uh, Kauai. What else could it mean? So when it recorded, <laughs> we started looking around different, you know, Kavas, and, you know, they got it spelled with the V. We know that that replaced the W. We know they love to replace the V to the W. Or we'll replace the W with the V, right? So we got that last time. But, you know, other translations of this Kawa with the V in there is to burn, scorch. And just keep that in mind because there's something about this Kawa. Kawaii. This clean man's dome. Connected with this North Carolina Mount Arid flow, Pilot Mountain flow, that has something to do with burning and scorching. And they keep saying, uh, you know, they say uh, Devil's Den, but we're just talking Dragon's Lair. So something very dragony about this place. <laughs> Constant breath, you know, a lot of things happening, man. So, all right. And I don't want to overlook the mulberry flow. Last time we kind of just jumped to these other definitions like burning, scorching. Then we got that there's a Hebrew verb, kawa, which means to tarry, to wait, to hold. Yeah. And this is what no one his fam had to have, man. They had to wait, they had to hold, right? To be to be delivered by the creator, you know what I mean, into the right area the right perfect fertile spot for them to pop off and it wasn't just dropping them off it was dropping them off at the right spot for them to build a, a life right to build a, a sanctuary a sacred ground so all these things connect with this kawa that is saying this is the cherokee and again Let's not overlook when we talk Cara, Cara, Carolina. We're also talking Cara, Cara, <laughs> Cara Key or Cherokee. Like China is Kana, Kenna, Kana. We're talking Cara. Even with the CH, we're still talking Cara. Same way they spell Cathay sometimes with the C H A T A or C A or K A or K H or the Katai, Cara Katai. How they put the KH here, right? Which will also be a CH. But they turn into CH, like China, <laughs> to throw us off in language. So this Cherokee is just Kara as well, my naga. Kara Ka. Again, we're just talking that dragon talk. Or Ka Wa. Kuai Kawai Ka meaning mulberry. I said, What's this mulberry situation about? We got the Hebrew verb Kawa meaning to wait, tarry, hope. Right? Hope is an underlying belief in the continuity, continuity based on a strong belief in Hawa. Hope is all about Hawa. Kawa is all about Hawa. Right? Obviously, it's in the it's in the verb itself. <clears throat> All right, we'll make a good, um, you know, uh, pure water. You know, this mouth's going to be, you know, uh, smooth as butter. <laughs> the water for surfing away. I see my Naga's always popping up. Hey, man, if you, if you if you still surfing away, man, we about to make a great dismount. If you still surfing away, go ahead and put the number nine in the comment section. <laughs> I'm going to get your comments, man. I appreciate y'all, you know, and just let me know that you made it to this point. It means a lot to me because I know that the attention of Nagas ain't really all that. Sometimes you want a few minutes, 
Are you sitting here for hours just taking the time and just letting it flow while you're at work or you're driving? I really appreciate that. We really are this investigation. We are tearing. We are waiting. We are hope, hopeful in Hawaii. We are MHOE. So Kawa has everything to do with Hawa. Has everything to do with burning and scorching as well. I mean, Hawa is about that fire. We know Psalms 18. Psalms 18, right? Okay. And again, there's many other Arabs as well as Armenia, Turkey. All right, of course, of course. North Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania. Australia, all right, so we're just zeroing in on this particular fruitful land here, okay? Arid, what does it mean? <laughs> they say it means sacred land or high land. Come. Yeah. Sacred land or high land. Tierra Fuego. Tierra. It's kind of crazy because Ararat Ar Ar spelled backwards is uh, Tarara. Like Tierra. Like, like Tarazante. <laughs> Which also means holy. Come on, man. I can't make that up, man. Anybody ever, you know, discussed this before, man? <laughs> Tara spelled backwards. Tierra, Tara spelled backwards. It's Ara, which also means sacred or high land, right? Or holy land. And Arid spelled backwards is Tar. Tiar, Tar. <laughs> Tarazat. <laughs> all right, all right. We're just talking land either way. Tara or Ara, right? Uh, Aria. Aria, we, we dug on that name Aria, which also brings us to the fiery. Dragon flow as well, right? So, okay, Ariah, right? Okay, okay, let's go. And there is an, <laughs> a Noah's Ark, North Carolina Museum of Art. Let's just keep, you know, let's. There is a North Carolina Museum of Art, okay. Uh, Oh, oh, there is a Noah's Ark wildlife in North Carolina. I mean, there, there is a lot of Noah's Ark connection in North Carolina <laughs> outside of this Mount Ararat flow. But getting back to it, Kawa to burn, scorch. Yeah, because the Ka is the dragon. To wait, to hope, yeah, you know, because Hawa will send your angels, your guardians, your dragons. <laughs> But what else is Kawa? It kind of gave us a very good hint right here that we'll dig on for the dismount, man. Uh, mulberry. I said, okay. What does mulberry got to do with anything, man? Let's, let's dig on some of this mulberry flow. Yeah, man. There is a connection with the holy land and the mulberry trees. I can't make this stuff up. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't make this up. So Clingman's Dome connects to this, uh, you know, Mount Ararat situation, you know what I'm saying, uh, in North Carolina. Pilot Mount. Because when you click Mountain to Sea, it's going to connect you to Clingman's Dome, right? You click Clingman's King Man, Dome. Like we did. <laughs> Suddenly you're talking about Kauai, right? They say Kauai means this, Kauai means that, but they say mulberry. We say, what's mulberry? They say, it's a holy land situation. <laughs> Would Hawaii have Noah pull up on the holy land, man? Let's go. We're talking clean man's dome, we're talking mulberry, we're talking indigenous. America. We're not talking about Eastern Turkey, right? We're talking mulberry trees. Right? 
And it's the Cherokee calling this, right? The Cherokee's talking Mulberry. The Kara Ka is talking Mulberry, right? All right. Cool. So the Cherokee talking Holy Land. Gotcha. <laughs> Therefore, David inquired again of Hawad. I said to him, Go not up after them, turn away from them. Come upon them over against the mulberry tree. We're talking holy land, right? First Chronicle 14, 14. The Hebrew term Beka, which appears in 2 Samuel 5, 23 through 24, and First Chronicles 14, 14 through 15. And some versions of the Bible translate as poplars, refers to the refers in fact to the mulberry tree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I talking Mulberry to Cherokee, the Karaka talking Mulberry, and they're connecting that with the Pilot Mountain or Mount Ararat. What is Mount Ararat got to do with this biblical holy tree situation? I told you we talking tree. We talking tree. Come. We talking tree, they talking tree. The Hebrew term Baka, Baka, okay. There are trees belonging to the Morus species. <laughs> Morus, huh? The Mor. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it says the black the black mulberry tree is called the Morris Negra. Ain't that something, man? The Naga, right? The nigga, right? The more roos, right? We just got the roos look just like you, right? The more roos. So this more roos letting you know, yeah, we're more, we're great, but we're the roos, man. <laughs> we're the clan Ross, man. We're the real sars and the real sar, the car, the car key is talking the mulberry tree. Car keys talking mulberry tree. One subspecies of which the white mulberry tree is called the Morris Alba. Kind of like Jessica Alba. Got it. Got you. Got you. The Alba. Albino. I got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. What's with this mulberry, man? The fact that the white mulberry blossoms late in April or May in the northern hemisphere was used as a negative example of theologian John Prime in a commentary on the words of the psalmist. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. I guess he has some commentary about it. I mean, y'all can read that. Check it out. Check Mulberry tree, sometimes called baka trees. We just got that from the Hebrew word baka. baka. And we just got the Second Samuel reference and the First Chronicle reference. And they talked about the poplar as well because the leaves of mulberry do not make a rustling sound when the wind blows through them. And it's generally agreed that the trees referred to must be populous euphratia. Like Euphrates. And if the mulberries over here, according to the Cherokee, <laughs> and so is the Euphrates. Uh oh. Which does not make the rustling sound referred to. It grows readily in the Jordan, <laughs> the Yarden, right? And may easily, quite easily be the willow trees referred to Psalms 137, right? on which the Jews hang their harps. So it's all over the place. It's just referred to different things as the 
Morus situation, the Baca situation. It could be the Poplar. It could be the the Willows. <laughs> Those who have wondered about the silk mentioned in Ezekiel 16, verse 10 and 13. And imagine themselves, or excuse me, imagine therefore that mulberry trees must have been available for the silkworm should realize that silk was not available to the Jews until about Ezekiel's time and he first saw silk when he was a captive in Babylon. Uh -huh. Revelations 18, 12 referred to Babylon and the silk there as well. Where's Babylon? Silkworms live on the trees of the white mulberry while Morris Negra is grown for its edible fruit. So, okay. That's a difference between black and white. <laughs> and let's go. And these are all different versions of this Second Samuel 5. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of the moving in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt steer themselves. For then shall Hawa go out before you to smite the host of the Phil Philistines. So. Yeah, uh, it's Hawa going out before you, right? It's not any other savior. David ain't calling on no other savior. No one's looking for no one else until you got the New Testament, man. Everyone's looking for the creator directly until you got the New Testament, man. Something happened to your direct connection. Something happened to your direct connection with Hawa. Now you got to go through somebody. Nah, no one is calling on nothing else, man. A while goes out before us to smite our enemies. Read Psalm 80, 89 real slow, man. Read Psalm 89 real slow. But even more than all this connection, man, all this Morris <laughs> connection. It's just a fantastic story. You gotta hear about the mulberry tree, right? I told y'all, <laughs> best dismount of all time. <laughs> and I'll leave y'all with this, man. The, the mulberry tree, now, we got this through the Cherokee flow. They're gonna bring us through like the whole Asia flow, which we already know is right here. Huh? And you're gonna see how many parallels this is to indigenous America. How many parallels this is to this Preston John investigation? <laughs> You're going to hear the Western Shishia being brought up, and I might as well bring up that link right now so you know it's talking about the same Shia dynasty that's being invaded by Genghis Khan, just like Preston John. There ain't no separation. So, <laughs> these Tangus are the she. No. As the Tangu Empire. The Tangu Empire is in North America. Or India superior boss with Cathay and India and China and Florida and Mexico and yes, Tangu. So when I talk Shishia, we're still talking America. Wow. We're still talking the car. <laughs> They're talking Carolinas. They say the Western Shia was annihilated by the Mongols 1227. What did we just get? Genghis Khan vanquished the tribe of Israel, right? <laughs> King David in there. That was their goal to get the promised land. The Shia is also the Almec, because the Almec call themselves the Shi, right? <laughs> so 
So you can say Genghis Khan went to war against the Almec. And the Almec were still in the house of David. Fighting against the hijack. Okay. She sheer denotes white or pure, high, kingdom, great, right? Like the Khan, like the Mongol, like the Moor, pure, <laughs> yeah. The white, high, great, she state, yeah. The lofty mother. Another name the Tangus used for their state was, you know, Dewey. I'm gonna sound like Dewey, David, man. <laughs> Which means the state of 10,000 secrets. And these tangs got in on it, and we connected the, connected the tangs to this uh, Islam flow before as well with this Mohammedans and this Genghis Khan confederacy. Because the, the tangs came in after the tang reasserted their authority. Descendant of Tuabo Kiki, <laughs> Tuabo Kwa Guang was put in charge of the local Tangu, so they were still, you know, uh, having the Tangus or the Shia as subjects. The Yeli, the Bali, the Bazao clans continued to side with the Tibetans. However, the Tangus also came under Tibetan predation and frontier settlements continued switching between Tang and Tibetan control. And the Tangu were still subjugated. The Shishi was still subjugated. In recent years, corrupt frontier generals have repeatedly harassed and mistreated the Tangu. Nigga, don't that sound like you, man? <laughs> so this has been an ongoing thing with this moral war to try to subjugate the children of Israel right here in America or Tangu. or Tanduk in North America, my nigga. Yeah, the Genghis Khan flow plays heavy. And it's so much history, but we didn't know it was talking about us right here in America. You know, it was just given to another people and put their images on it, right? When you start factoring back in the Yodashi flow, the Lao dynasty, the Shia flow, the Katans, or the Kar Katai. The Katan means Kathay, Katay, Katan. This is also talking about the seed of the Preston. Tribe Israel, my not? Definitely gotta get back on the chance. Because the jet play has to get there. I'm told, but you got it, man. You got it. <clears throat> and there we go. There we have it. 1207, Genghis led another raid into the Western Shishia. <laughs> Again, the all men call themselves the thing XI Shia flow as well. And the Shia is also the Shem flow as well. And Hashem is being invaded by this Genghis Khan, who was also supposed to be within the tribe of Shem, but he's with a different tribe than Hashem. Sound familiar?
Genghis Khan led the way <laughs> into the shit. The Tangu, the former United Front, with the Gur, 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 Gur and Jin dynasty against the Mongols at this time, the Mongols is just referred to Genghis Khan in it. But the usurper monarch Wang Yan, Yang Ji, refused to cooperate and declared that it was to their advantage that the enemies attack one another. So he couldn't get he couldn't get the help, right? They were all confederate against the Shia. They were confederate against the Tangu. They were confederate against you, man. They even called these Tangu, what they call them? Karakoto. Now, before we saw, they said, uh, talked about the blackness of these tango. Could be a different lake, but, yeah. Now that we know that these are the Shia, you could just research the Tangu separately. You know, you're still talking about the same Shia, same North America, same Almec connection. When you say, what happened to the Almec? Al what happened to the Shia? <laughs> the Almec are the Shia. They're going to give you all these other images. They submitted to the Tang honestly, and I think the Tang had a lot to do with his Mohammedan flow as well. Because they were rocking wood gang as kind. Oh, there we go. According to William of Rubric, who traveled to various parts of the Mongol Empire in the 13th century, the Tangus were valiant and had big swarthy men among them. Man, you know what swarthy means? <laughs> It means nagas, niggas, it means blackness, it means melanin, it means copper color cons, right? So big, swarthy copper color people was with them. In contrast to the Uyghurs, who were of medium size. Now, they didn't say they weren't swarthy too. It just says some had big ass people with them, some had medium people with them. The Tangu people I saw were tall but swarthy, right? So these are the black tango <laughs> right here in India Superior. And Genghis Khan was at war with them. And they were also next to Shia, Shia right? And the Almex are also the Shi, right? Almex, Shi. Right. I mean, I'm just jumping right in. Right? <laughs> so, don't let them fool you that like there's some differentiation <laughs> between this Mongol she and the Almec she. The more is the Mo is the Mongol, right? <laughs> the Almec is the she. Yeah, I'll leave this link because it's gonna give you a lot of. She drop. We just understand when we're talking she, oh man, we're talking she, she, Western, right? We're still talking Tangu, which means we're still talking right here, Holy Land, Cathay, India Superior, Tangu. Still talking Tangu. Florida, Mexico. What's all they got to do with Mexico? Heads are popping off all over the place. All make heads everywhere, right? Okay. 
I'm just saying that because but it is man, you know. I'll get a piece of this and we'll continue this and press the one twenty one. Call me Hano. Cause we out of here. <laughs> now it says an important treatise on Archer Yi. Archer Yi, the ten sons, three legged sunbirds, and mulberry tree. World tree. And the point is, I mean, if the Cherokee's calling this Mount Ararat Mulberry Place, <laughs> what's this mythology, so called mythos, of this mulberry? And what does this world tree got to do with a place that Noah's Ark is pulling up at? All right, let's just see if we get some dropout. Could be something, could be nothing, boss. Sarah Island's the shape of the turtle. Oh, damn, we talking Turtle Island already? We out of here, man. <laughs> Myth, art, cosmos, and early China is one of the most important and possibly the most important treaties on, on the Ten Sons, Archie Yi, and the Mulberry World Tree. Mythical legends of Eastern Asia. Where's Asia, my not? Let's go. In her book, she argues that the crow is the symbol of the Shang kings of the Ch Shang Dynasty, the Shang believed that the people continued to exist and therefore needed food after death was evident in the pottery vessels filled with grain and buried with the Shang dead. The spirits were important as they related to the living in Shang times. The high ancestor Gao Zhu were distinguished from immediate ancestors. Okay, okay. Let's go. Her hypothesis is that, quote, the Shang had a myth of ten sons and that the Shang ruling group was organized in a totemic relationship to these sons. This myth was specified to the Shang and integrally associated with their rule. When the Zhao, who believed in one son, conquered the Shang, the myth lost its earlier meaning and the system its integrity, but the motifs were transformed and continued to occur in other contexts. At the popular level, people continued to believe in ten sons, which rose in consequence from the branches of the mulberry tree in outlying religion or regions. Okay. What's this mulberry tree got to do with these ten sons? <laughs> In the central states, this tradition was known, but the ten sons were confined to the mythical past by the story that one day all of them came out at once and nine were shot by Archer Yi. The Shang continued to be associated with many of the motifs of this tradition and the myth of the origin of their tribe from the egg of the black bird is a transformation of the myth of the bird and the ten, of the ten sons which rose from the mulberry tree, but the belief in ten sons had been lost. In the Zhao dynasty, the tradition that there was only one son was so widely accepted that Mencius quoted Confucius as saying, quote, heaven does not have two sons, the people do not have two kings. Myth though it was, and although it did not leave any trace upon the history of Chinese astronomy, the belief in ten alternating suns was a strongly competing tradition in ancient China. Oh, man, so are we talking about like the sun in the sky today, that is alternating, like going in and out of windows type of thing? Alright, are we talking about like the suns like, uh, you know, I mean, the sons could be referring to tribes, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we don't know, right? But so much that in the first century AD, Wang Kong launched a, spir a spirited denial of the possibility of ten sons perching on the branches of a tree without burning it to send it. So they're looking at it as a literal thing as well. I mean, these sons could be people, you know, that, you know, would be sons of the Most High. You know, of course, you know, we know one shepherd forever, you know, but, um, you know, would, 
you know, Moshe, Joshua, you know, would all these be considered sons as well, according to this legend here? You know, this is what we're saying. So Wang Chong's account is drawn from two earlier texts, the Shang Hai Jing, a corpus of mythological geographies drawn together in the Han Dynasty. Again, the Han just means Khan. Han is Khan. Just like uh, Lady Hannah is also uh, Lady Kana, right? <laughs> this is where you're getting the Kananites, because Kanan is also Hanan. And it's also a version of the Canaanite flow, but without the Ham flow, because Hanan, Kanan are all sons of David. So you got to choose your Canaan, or Kanan, or Hanan, or Ania. <laughs> all right, so the Han, like Hannah, Lady Hannah flow, all right? Dynasty from variety of sources, different date and origin, and the Hawaii is the Hawaii <laughs> Nanzi. All right, you see it, man. All right, <laughs> the Hawaiian Nanzi, a uh, syncretic philo text compiled at the court of Luan, prince of Hawaiian and Nan. <laughs> I'm a little like Annie, Annie, uh, right. And presented to Han Emperor Wu Di in 139 BC. Managa is just play play. They say it's mythology, but there sure are a lot of dates. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> it draws upon a or ancient oral tradition. There appears to be an association between the Ten Sun tradition in southern China. It might be argued that this was not a shame tradition retained in the South during the Zhao, but one which originated in the state of Ku or Chu, a number of Shang sites in the Chu region, and the connection between Shang and Chu or Ku culture has been confirmed by archaeological excavation. Is it play play? The most extensive or extensive finds were from Tianhu in Luoshan County, just south of the Hawaii River. Right? So these people are Hawaii H A W A I or H U A like Joshua, it's all Hawa, the breath, security, frame or shape of my night. Hawa, Hawa, it's everywhere. Just south of the Hawaii River <laughs> in southern Henan province, or we talking Hanan, <laughs> like Hanan, right? Son of the Preston. Could we talk in the wild? <laughs> I mean, it's right. It's literally right on our Facebook. Right? They talking Hana. <laughs> they talking Hana. We talking Hannah, right? <laughs> Lady Hannah. She's the wife of David the first. For the dismount, y'all ready, man? Okay. Lady Hannah, or Anna, right? Mary, mother. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wife of David the First. Dewey. Dowie. Gotcha. Now, Exilarch. Dawi. His father is the Preston. Right. Got that. Raja Haraja the second Jadaran Emperor of Soli Soliman Preston John Pedion. And this Preston John is also the same. As this David the First Dewey, who's married to Lady Hannah, circa twelve hundred, right? This is right around the time of the Genghis Khan invasion, but what appears to be right before. This is King David, and right now, just to just to show you, the Estelar David, who's the son of Raja Raja Chola, is the son of a David because you know Raja. Rachel's wife is also Lady Hannah. So Hannah, 
that's married to Roger and Roger Chola Jada Rampressa John. It's the same lady, Hannah, that's married to David the First. You just gotta piece the timeline together. <laughs> Who has the same son, Hanan, which they're calling Hanan in this uh, mulberry tree chop. <laughs> and it's the same uh, that is the son of the same lady Hannah and Preston Child, who is called Hanan, Jewish king of Tom, brother of Exilarch David, son of Raja Hiraja, Shola Preston John Jadaram, or David the First. Let you know the David title is rocking, even before this. <laughs> okay, all right. We're just talking Hana, right? Hana, come on, one ladder rule. Here we go. So we're talking Hawa. All right, we're talking Hana, <laughs> and we're talking Wa. Oh, who, oh, who is Preston Cha? <laughs> We out of here, baby. Press the 120 and let uh, uh, uh. So let's go. Talking to Zao Ruler, claim his title. His title, Wang, or King, exclusively for the Son of Heaven. Well, we got the validation of who David is. Psalms 89 calls him the firstborn bond, right? <laughs> Anointed of Hawa. You see how this is tied together? <laughs> Son of Heaven, Tianzi history, and the Shang dynasty, the rulers of many states used this title and were recognized by the Shang ruler, who was also called the King or the Wong. And shout out to the Khan Tonavi, man. Go hit him up on IG. Uh, man, he's doing this whole full saying drop, man. He got a whole investigation popping off. Shout out to the Khan Tone Avi. It says, the according to the Shuan, the Fusang is a spirit tree. So you look up the Fusang, man, it's going to take you to really, you know, interesting drop, man. Uh, I never saw it connected with the spirit tree, but maybe the Khan Tonavi being connected that, you know what I mean? Doing great, Recon. Oh, yeah, there's a whole Fusan tree situation, man. What is the story of the Fusan tell us? Whoa. <laughs> Man, told I'll be driving, you know, he popping off. So the Fusang is, it says the story of the Fusang explains the origins of the American people. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> so according to the Shawawi, the Fusang is a spirit tree. Just like Avatar, right? <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. That from which the suns go out. The mulberry with its red and white berries. Depicted in the Oracle Bone script as a tree with many mouths among its branches provides an apt metaphor for this tree on the branches of which many suns perched. Foolish usually interpreted as the name of the mulberry tree. <laughs> I told y'all it's all about the mulberry tree. And the Cherokee are the ones that's calling this Mount Ararat in North Carolina, Car, right? <laughs> calling it Kauai, right? And we research Kauai and they say mulberry. And we research mulberry and they go to Fusa. And now we're at the spirit tree. And the Fusa this 
go check out the con Tone Ivy. I think it's spelled T O N E A V A or A V I I. I mean, come on. It's a whole connection with this facade. This voyage, you know what I'm saying? This this tree connection is crazy talk. Showing the inhabitants of the new world. Arrive there from the old and continuing to to a disfusionist account of the development of civilization in space and time. What? 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 It's crazy talk. This is crazy talk. <laughs> talk live is crazy. This is this is what you've been dropping, man. It's crazy talk. So the fool is the mulberry tree. <laughs> what? So this is from the Enlightenment story of the Chinese discovery of America. So that you know, now that we know that we're in China, <laughs> let's see if we can read this with a dragonfly respect. Abstract from Alexander Statman, seventeen sixty one, the French scholar and Sinologue Joseph de Guinness announced that, quote, Chinese vessels made the voyage to America. We know that this is China, right? All right, let's go. Many centuries before Christopher Columbus. From the Chinese books in the Bibliothek, Bibliothek de Roy. New missionary reports from Beijing. He concluded that the mythical land of Fusong. <laughs> sound like the cities of gold, right? The mythical cities of gold. The mythical precedent. Everything's mythical, right? Avatar. Everything. Dragons are myth. Everything's a myth. Everything's a myth, right? Mosak, the founder, he's a myth. Everybody's a myth. The mythical land of Fusong, described by a medieval Buddhist monk, could be nowhere other than the west coast of North America, boss. Let me get that big. I never read this before, man. I am belly flopping with the cons and press the 120 for the dismount. So now we're talking about like Lemuria, like Moo, right? Like Kylie, right? Like like the Four Corners, like, like the Grand Canyon, right? We're talking about the west coast of North America. Is the mythical land of Fusan, and Fusan connects with this tree. Sacred tree, right? Only recently charted by European navigators, Philip Boucher. Boucher. <laughs> right, you got Philip Boucher, premier geographer, De Roy agreed. At the height of the French Enlightenment, the indigenous geographical tradition of China could be used to further the progress of universal science, providing evidence about issues from the mapping of the Pacific Rim, right? Now we're in the Pacific, right? Now we're in the, the Moolah Maria flow, right? Not the Atlantis, but the, <laughs> the alchemical dragon flow to the organization of the continents. Furthermore, the story of Fusan explains the origins of American people showing that the inhabitants of the new world had arrived here from the old. See, that's where they try to flip you at the last minute, but just know that it connects to the indigenous Americans. This is the land of Cathay that Marco Polo called China. And we got it on the map showing India superior balls. So stop the play play. You know, what's this development of civilization in space and time? <laughs> Seem to be some high tech drive, man. Sound like some high tech stuff, man. Man, it's Fusang flow. Huh? They got some dragon flaw. This says Fusan artifacts, man. Yeah. Ancient symbols, deities, and dragon horses, man. They got all kinds of stuff.
Oh. German Carl Friedrich Newman. He's identifying the land of Fusan with Mexico. Huh? Told y'all, man, greatest disparate of all time. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> so, who Shang's voyage from China 500 years before Lee, Eric, son of a thousand, before Columbus, all right, before all that? <laughs> We're talking about the Pacific flow, land on the west coast of the continent, which he described as the wonderful land of Fusan. In the year 458, the great Alexander von Humboldt called him Leif Erikson of China and the land of Fusang, the Vinland of the West. The French synagogues, the Guinness of Paris, believed that he had reached California. The German Carl Frederick Newman identified the land of Fusang as Mexico. One American, Charles G. Leland, wrote a monograph called Fusa. Man. 800 page encyclopedic volume about the man he regarded as an inglorious Columbus. <laughs> Dr. Charles E. Chapman, in his History of California, the Spanish Period, New York, 1921, developed a chapter to him entitled The Chinese Along the Pacific Coast in Ancient. Times. This is opening up a whole can of things. Canton, Avi, talking about Fusang, and they call Fusang the Marberry Tree. Fusang is a spirit tree. I'm just looking over here to the side on these other topics, man, and we keep saying, man, did. Did Hawa have his dragon Leviathan smash Atlantis to bits? <laughs> Leviathan surely is capable of ripping Atlantis to pieces for sure. And then over here, I just saw this uh, Armenian tale of a Leviathan that causes earthquakes. <laughs> then Atlantis get dropped by a big ass earthquake, right? Recalls the quake causing catfish myth of Kashima Shrine. I don't know what that is, but it does relate Leviathan to causing earthquakes, right? <laughs> Did Leviathan cause a great earthquake <laughs> that completely dismantled Atlantis? Man, I guess that's a whole another topic for another time. We got a lot of topics for other times. That's why we keep going and press the investigation, man. We're talking Hawaii's dragon. All right, so Fusang is a spirit tree that from which the sun or suns go out. The mulberry with this red and white berries depicted in the oracle bone script. All right, we got that. Fu is usually interpreted interpreted as the name of the mulberry tree. All right, okay, that's a Fu. Sometimes called the Fu tree or the Fu Mu. <laughs> In the full moon, right? Now we're talking about the Pacific land, you know, Lemuria, all that land that's still under the water. So now, since we've been talking about Ararat, and that led us all the way to the mulberry tree, <laughs> we got to ask, like, is the same water, the same cataclysm that flooded Atlantis, is that the same flood that Noah's dealing with? And have the waters fully receded. You know, did that Mount Ararat, you know, and the water went down, you know, from that point. But, you know, that flood covered up a lot more <laughs> than just, you know, what we consider 
surface land today. You know, a lot of land is under that water in the Pacific. A lot of land is under that water in the Atlantic, right? So you see how the flood levels or the water levels could rise and fall in it. Entire kingdoms, beautiful kingdoms, high-tech kingdoms can be flooded out by Hawa opening up these great chambers. And the waters beneath and the waters below. The waters beneath and the waters above. You know what I mean? The gates of the heavens, you know, the heavenly waters, you know, the <laughs> the great oceans beneath. Same thing with the Anasazi migration. They had to start moving out of these four corners because all that water went underground. Somehow, you know, sometimes a walk can drop that water on you. Now you're in a famine. Sometimes a walk can raise the water up. Now you're in a flood. The water's level rise and fall. I mean, this is what you got to know. Who you playing with, man. So, Did the waters fully recede? And then, and when they do, since this Atlantean, Atlantis cat, cataclysm, you know, when the waters go back to normal, will you see this Mu and uh, Kamari, Kandam, and uh, Lemuria? Like, will you see these ancient underwater lands again? Civilization back then must have been on some real low, low sea level flow, you know, for it to be flooded out for so long. And when the waters rise, you know, we're all underwater <laughs> back to the no flood flow because if the first dry land, you know, that was fertile was 2,000 feet above sea, <laughs> sea level in Mount Ararat in North Carolina or wherever it is, it just lets you know, like, the waters receded at least 2,000 feet. But imagine 2,000 feet of water coming right back. You're back to the flood situation. So things to keep in mind how this relates to Atlantis and definitely how it relates to Leviathan that causes earthquakes. Huh? <laughs> Did Leviathan sink Atlantis, man? Just things that make you go, hmm. Just a question for another time. The tree is sometimes written with a character which means support, the support of the tree for the signs, or that two trees supported one another. The mulberry tree is a tradition that is consistent in the Shanghai Jing, Hawa, Nanzi, and Kuki, and the Kuchi, Kuki. All right, Ooh. all right, all right. And as you see, there's a lot more to this mulberry flow. <laughs> I wish I could get it all, man, but we wish. I'm going to leave it for y'all. Y'all let me know what else is popping off uh, that's related related to the recon. You know what I mean? But beyond the southeastern sea amidst the sweet waters, man, is the tribe of the Shia. See, now we're talking Shishia. Hold up, man. You can't just start talking Shishia on a night. On a night. <laughs> right? What? Uh -huh. You know, Noah had to send that bird out. They, they talking about a black bird, a raven situation, man. All right. Belly flopping, man. King of Ma's Mao, man. Shout out to the Khan Five Eyes Ma, man. He's over here popping off. <laughs> I know I saw some shit drop. There we go. There we go. I just had to keep reading a little bit. Let's get this little, get this last part here, man, for the dismount. I'm just going to pick it up in the middle. Thus water ran beneath the earth just as the sky surmounted it. This dualism, dualism is sometimes made explicit as, for example, in the Zhang, in the Zhang Zi, which speaks of trading the yellow springs and 
climbing to the great sky. The great flood, right? Are we talking about Noah's Ark? I can't make this stuff up, my not. Now we're back in the flood story talking Mulberry and the Cherokees calling Mount Ararat. Kawa, which is related to the Mulberry and the Great Flood. And we still talk the Great Flood in this myth in this mythology of the Mulberry tree. <laughs> the Great Flood was a problem of controlling these waters when they threatened to rise up to the sky. <laughs> and the Shia, my nugget. Ancestors are regularly associated with the Ru <laughs> or the Rus <laughs> old river, the yet the color yellow, and the nether world. Oh what's this got to do with the Shashia? Like, this is getting crazy talk. So the Great Flood was a problem of controlling these waters when they threatened to rise up to the sky. <laughs> and the Shia ancestors are regularly associated with the Ru or river, the color yellow, and the netherworld. And we were just talking Shashia. And the Shi are the Almec. Oh man, come on man, come on man, stop the play play. Yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. They tripping. tripping, why y'all tripping? I'm just looking at the she. Calm down man, stop tripping. <laughs> Black Jack, with the she, you know, or the all man. And now this Fusang glow is talking about space and time and, you know, these original roots of the Americans, Columbus in there. The Fusangs connected this journey of Columbus <laughs> and Mexico and California. And they're all connected back with the she and the tango, <laughs> the swarthy tango, right? Back to the mall bear. And we'll get some more later on this metamorphic rock situation because we got that the kawa means burning, right? And scorching and this metamorphic rock, this quartzite that they're saying that this pilot mountain is found on this quartzite. This metamorphic rock refers to any type of rock that is created from a change of pre-existing rocks caused by climate, or excuse me, <laughs> changing environmental conditions such as differences in temperature, pressure, mechanical stress, addition or loss of chemical components. The pre-existing rocks may be igneous, sedimentary, or other metamorphic rocks. The process of metamorphism does not cause the rocks to melt, but instead transforms them into denser, more compact rocks. So this metamorphosized quartz has been transformed into a more compact situation. New materials, minerals, excuse me, are formed either by rearranging, rearrangement of mineral components or by reactions with fluids that enter the rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're talking thermal metamorphism, like the quartzite. The quartzite forms when quartz rich sandstone is altered by heat, my nigga. Pressure, my nigga. <laughs> So what happened? What happened that made this whole pilot mountain a bunch of this metamorphosed, <laughs> metamorphized, altered by heat, pressure, chemical activity situation? What happened, man? 
to make this situation recrystallize as quartz. Things that make you go, hmm, <laughs> old pilot mountain. So clean it on. Clean man's dome is referred to by the Cherokee archive as Kauai, meaning mulberry place. <laughs> and we just got some great mulberry mythologies, mythos, into this world tree, spirit tree connection. Huh? And air right backwards is tar, like tar something, like holy land. Ararat means sacred place, and the mulberry tree definitely connects to a sacred spirit tree, sacred place. Highest point. This highest mountain. It says at an elevation, it is the highest mountain in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The highest point in the state of Tennessee. The highest point along the 2,192-mile Appalachian Trail by night. I'm talking clean man's dome. This mountain is in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina. Both, right? God, highest point, Tennessee or Tunisia. <laughs> highest point. Hey, nothing to see here, boss. I, I've been to all the national parks. I've been to all the highest points. Ain't no way Jerusalem's here. Ain't no way Israel's here. Ain't no way the old world is here. I seen it all, boss. Man, we heard that before. I'm sure you went through the whole trail, didn't you? And I'm sure you stayed on that trail the whole time, huh? <laughs> oh, man. We done heard it all. Mountains to see. Yeah, it's a lot to see. It's a lot to see in Pilot Mountain. Metamorphic quartzite. What happened that made it heat up with all this pressure? Why is it called burning? Right. Oh. Why is it called burning, scorching? What does that burning and scorching have to do with this metamorphic rock formation? Altered by heat, pressure, chemical activity. They're talking tectonic plates. Anything to do with Leviathan in there? We're talking dragons, man. We're talking burning. <laughs> We're talking Atlantis being obliterated by Leviathan. Hmm. That would be enough to alter <laughs> something by heat and pressure and chemical activity, man. I think so. I think so. We got to get back on that Fusang flow, too, man. Back to full saying. Underwater city? What? Yeah. Oh, oh. Fushang Lake, right? Fusang, Fushang Lake. Oh, boy. The haunted seas to Japan. Travelers from the west. Would pass Eo and Fusong on the way to the inland sea towards the Kansai River, Kansai region, cities of Nara. The whole thing on ancient aliens on it, man.
Yeah, they go right to dragons, right? See, dragons, dragons, man. I'm just checking on Food Song, and they they throwing dragons at me, right? Ain't that so? <laughs> All right, all right. I see y'all. I see y'all. <laughs> I see where you're heading to. Last part is this, my noggin, man. I mean, we just had time talking about this burning, scorching, Leviathan flow. Kawa, kawa. To tarry, to wait, to hope, to have belief in a while, faith in a while. We're talking about knowing the family, man, and civilization popping off. You know, a story that is sacred. Virgin land, Carl land, Carolinas, sacred land, high land, right? We're talking the highest points. <laughs> Metamorphic quartz, we talk. Pilot Mountain, which is, of course, Mount Ararat. <laughs> the Stonehead on the Fry Jefferson map in 1753, and Mount Ararat on the Collet map, C O L L E T. In 1770, and on the price map in 1808. For this map. And if you dig on the uh, North Carolina room, uh, WordPress is going to give you so much more drop. You know, digging on Pilot Mountain. We'll get some of this on the way out. But just know, we got receipts, man. Yeah, we're talking the line between Virginia and North Carolina, boss. Uh, uh, <laughs> Right in your face, ball, my naga. Yeah. Right in your face, ball. This is what it says in North Carolina, Pia, ncpedia.org. That this mount or pilot mount served as an important served as a landmark for Indians and pioneer white settlers of the area appears as Mount Ararat or Stonehead on the Fry Jefferson's map. 1753, Mount Ararat on the Collet map, 1770, and on the Price map, map in 1808. This is the Jamoki. It means the Great Guide. We're talking North Carolina, Virginia. What are you guiding? What's the great guide? Unless we're talking the creator, right? The devil's dead. Unless we're talking dragons and burning and scorching, right? Let's go. Oh, and it's a steady breeze. <laughs> All the time of that dragon breath. See brushy mountains. All right, we will. We will. We're talking air rat. drink of water. I say I ain't gonna try to go over three hours no more. We at 324. I'm trying my night. <laughs> Drop is trying. Let's get it. Alright, so uh, let's just get something new.
<laughs> Hijack want to climb to the top of the pinnacle. I'm just, I'm just reading the small print, man. <laughs> I'm just belly flop. Okay, okay. We give two illustrations, one showing the two pinnacles, giving the most familiar view from various points in this vicinity, right, right here in the middle. The other is taken from a point on the road between Dalton's and Mount Airy, or Arid, <laughs> and is by some considered the most singular view, as it gives only one end and it's almost pyramidal or pyramidal, right? In form. Didn't we say that this thing looked like a pyramid? Hmm. <laughs> is, is this Mount Arid flow a pyramid? And then Noah just land on top of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Because they're calling it a pyramidal form. At Dalton's, you find good accommodations and a beautiful view of the mountain. Yeah, I get it. I bet. Party desiring to visit Salem or Jerusalem can add two charming mountain retreats to their plans for rural pleasures, each about the same distance from here. The first is the Pilot, and the other is the Sartel Mountains with their mineral springs and cascades of pure water. How do we get this pure water to the tribe? That mem sauce, man. Tumbling over huge boulders into quiet little nooks, man. Well, this is just like a little kind of advertisement <laughs> to pop off. Height of Pilot Mountain. It's at 1551 feet from the Grassy Creek. Come on. So elevation on the north side is 205 feet. Elevation on the south side, 205 feet. That's why they're saying it looks like a pyramid. Right? Huh? <laughs> Birdman hand rough with a dismount, man. Did, did Noah, did the most high have Noah pull up on this isolated mountain away from mountains, this pyramid that was once a giant tree stump? Are some of these pyramids just remnants of ancient trees, boss? With fresh mem sauce flowing, pure water. All area newspapers pro promoted the pilot. This from the Salem's People Press, 1879. Everybody's promoting the pilot, the guardian, the guide, right? Yeah, man. The majestic pinnacles look like long processions of titanic ghosts, solemn and grand in their solitude. The ascent to the top of the large pinnacle or pyramid is rugged and exciting. It is made by climbing from rock to rock until the top is reached, nine of our party went to the very top, and they made the trip with a wonderful degree of success. Wow. Wow. The view from the top of the pilot, this halfway station to the clouds. Cloud forest. Trees that reach the clouds, my knocker. Is that where Noah pulled up at? Is indeed sublime and magnificent beyond description or imagination. The earth appeared like one grand piece of patchwork of dazzling colors fresh from the loom of heaven. Is this what Noah pulled up at? Wouldn't Hawaii want Noah to pull up to dazzling colors fresh from the loom of heaven? <laughs> the quaint looking far. I mean, does this sound like Eastern Turkey era rat? Or does it sound like Paradise Era? <laughs> huh? Are we talking mulberry trees, spirit trees, my life? 
The quaint looking farmhouses look like so many beehives peeping through the trees. Man, okay. Okay. The shadows of the floating clouds? It's crazy talk. The noble yacht king had the appearance of a piece of ribbon spread out upon the earth and the floating off into the distance while the brooklets something merrily danced merrily on their way to the sea. The shadows of the floating clouds upon the world below looked like so many phantoms chased by the sunbeams, the tall sentinel pines and the ivory and the mosses lit a relieving or the mosses lent a relieving tinge to the ground scene. Above bends a sky of translucent azure, beauteous as ever beheld it. I'm not gonna sound like paradise. Sound like somewhere Hawaii will have Noah pull up to start and pop off, re pop off civilization. <laughs> Every brow was fanned by refreshing breezes, which were welcome messengers from Cloudland, man. They call it Cloudland <laughs> in Carolina, right? <laughs> this is about Pilot Mountain, right? <laughs> Mount Ararat, man, Cloudland, because it was so high. Mount Ararat, you know, it means a... Uh, Sacred or high land. God, it was just so high. Wow. Man, I'll leave y'all with this final body bag, man. I mean, all praise of why that we able to surf this wave, man, and keep the water flowing, keep the fire burning all these years, man. Um, from hackerhouse.com. You know, it's interesting when you connect all this, man. I know it's very small, but I'll read it from my knockers, man. Early History of Surrey County. Thesis by Bob Jackson, published 1967. A Baptist minister, one Evan Singer, relates Indian legends that surround the property. Quote, local groups of Cherokee refer to the place as Chicamagua. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Back to the Chicamagua, right? Meaning the field of death, my dog. Rest in power to Kumse, Dragon Canoe, and all the Chicamagua. No Indian will go near the sea as they believe it contains evil spirits. An Indian legend states that the Yunwiga, Y-U-N-W-I-G-A, or real people, so the Yunwiga, <laughs> or called the real people, were told by the Great Spirit to avoid this place. And it is the place where a brave may not walk, and his prayers would not be answered if he were to go through the area. Wow, so George... Rasmussen of the Westminster College Archaeology Department excavated the remains of several early Indians at the site in July 1923. We're talking Chicamago, right? From his notes, quote, it resembles a mass grave with several dozen bodies in one direction from evidence at the site and other dating methods. It was determined the individuals died of 1685. Plus or minus 10 years further, examination revealed the individuals were all male aged 20 to 25 years old and were in good health. No indication was given for cause of death of such a large number of individuals. One leg bone was found to have a large concentration of cellules, cell, cellulose. And what can be determined of the cell structure, it resembled fibers or wood. But other than this fact, there was no other evidence of any foul play. The incident happened long before the English began pushing forward into what is now Surrey County. 
a few trappers or hunters would have been the only contact the Indians would have had. Certainly, there were no large expeditions into the area until several decades later. If this had been a massacre, there would have been evidence of gunshots or knife or axe wounds on the remains, but there were not. From historical records for the area this information was found, it is true that war parties were sent through this territory to make trouble for the settlers east of the Blue Ridge, but they had no abiding place west of that divide. Bishop Spangenberg was here in December 1752, but he saw no Indians, though speaking of an old Indian field, there's a tradition in the settlement near Ararat and Rock Creek, right? So we're still talking Ararat, right? <laughs> in Rock Creek, known in Surrey County, that Alexander White was the first settler in that locality whose name is now remembered and lived in Melvin C. Bixter, Bickerstaff, now resides. But that another had preceded him at that place and while hunting one day he saw from a ridge a party of Indians killed two white men who were lying out in that locality in order to escape service to the Revolutionary War and trample their bodies beyond sight in a mud hole which then stood near the present residence of Reverend W.C. Franklin. This settler did not reveal himself to the Indians but hastening to his own cabin half a mile away escaped with his uh, yeah, with his wife and child to Fort Critter, C-R-I-D-E-R, -E which in 1780, Dr. Draper tells us, page 185, was situated on a small eminence within the present limits of Pilot Mountain. After having been forced to eat while on a journey through the rough mountains, the small pet dog which followed him. Oh, he had to eat the small pet dog which followed them. And there were also another tradition that the American forces followed a party of marauding Cherokees, Chicamagua, Caraca, who's calling this uh, new, this, this mulberry situation, you know what I'm saying? This, uh, you know, Mount Ararat, you know what I'm saying, Mulberry Flow, all coming from these Cherokee, and we talking Chicamagua. <laughs> so there's also another tradition that the American forces followed a party of Ch of Cherokee <laughs> all right, to the rock cliffs just above Pilot Mountain, now called Hanging Rock, right? Same area in that locality, but retreated because the savages, right? They gotta call us savages. They gotta call us dragons because we fierce and violent. The savages were too strong for them. These, however, are the only traditions diligent inquiry has revealed. There is, however, other evidence of forays across the Blue Ridge by Cher Cherokees from their towns on the Little Tennessee. These Chicamagua, right? <laughs> These are the Chicamagua, right? And these Chicamagua were the ones that were on the front line of the war, the true front line soldiers. Because America's been at war at least 93% of the time. Popping off in 1776 against who? Shikamawa, 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 Shikamawa. I mean, you see it. You see it. So you're telling me the invasion of this current corporation happened at the same relative site as the Noah Ark, Mount Ararat, <laughs> in the Carolinas, Tennessee flow, Virginia flow. <sighs> I 
They chasing off these hijacks. We're talking Pilot Mountain or Mulberry, which is all throughout the script. Second Samuel, First Chronicles, even references of Ezekiel, Padag, Psalms, Mana. Holy Land. You talking Holy Land when you talking Mulberry? Holy Land. And what is the real name of this Jim O'Key? Cherokee connection. Yeah, we talking about Holy Land, we talk Marbury. Where the breeze blows all the time with this dragon breath <laughs> and their devil's dead. Mount Ararat. That's all over the maps. Kawa. Kawa. When we talking Holy Land, we talking Mount Bear, man. <laughs> we talking Kawaii. The place of hope. Ta. Waiting for the wings, right? <laughs> Waiting for the wings like Psalms 18. Flying on the wings of the wind. Burning. Scorching like the seraphim, the burning ones. The dracons, the burning ones. We're just talking about the sacred tree of the mall bear re and Mount Ararat <laughs> at the water cons, my nagas, for tuning in to the 120th installment of the Prester John investigation. We did it again. We did it again, my naga. We did it again. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. See, drop. How you still popping off? Three hours and forty-three minutes. If y'all still here, can y'all just uh, leave me a number nine in the comment? The nine stands for the nine code, and X is twenty. <laughs> Got a sin code. The water for surfing the wave. Nine above the barrier. Four please. Four plus three plus two. <laughs> Four, three, two, we in the nine, we in the spiral. And the spiral is life. Fibonacci. The vortex. The tree of life. Allah, wow. We in the holy land, my night. The foo song. <laughs> yeah. I got you, Kanto, not V. We in a building with the food song. You know, the water to, uh, you know, all my noggers leaving great comments. Shout out, it's free to pay attention. I connect the Jacob Esau situation here in North Carolina. The sports team had a lot of weight and finding truth bombs, okay? Come on. Duke was Trinity. Look at this comment, man. Duke was Trinity College before the Dukes. Dukes are the descendants of Esau. Bought it and changed the name. Duke and the Carolina Tar Heels is one of the biggest rivalries because Jacob was holding on to Esau's heels. Oh, pink pal for the dismount. Even Carolina symbol was a foot and Dukes used the devil mascot. Pain, pow. 
This is what I'm talking about, Drum Nation. When you leave a comment, this is what I'm talking about, man. I appreciate that, man. That's cray cray. So we got the Tar Heels and the Dukes as a rivalry and the sports teams. And you know, just like the Cleveland Indians and, you know, all these teams using Cleveland Browns and, you know, Washington Redskins. Like they're all using some type of the flow right there in Carolinas, man. You got Duke and the Tar Heels. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Crazy talk. Love to Jason Bright. Because I've been waiting for you to discover this. You are indeed chosen, my brother. Hey, my dog. You, you ain't got to wait for us to discover this, man. I need you to be popping off, man. <laughs> but nah, man. We chosen, man. We drop nation, man. We the water. This is um, a published investigation for everyone to follow and dig on. And again, it's just an investigation. It's not to give you all facts on everything, but... With enough validation, we do see hashtag facts that we're the indigenous cons, that they're looking for Preston John, and that you are the function, my nigga. Con David is real. Genghis Khan stole the flow, which means he got to be real. Yeah, this is the greatest investigation you've ever been on. <laughs> greater than the cities of gold. Greater than, you know what I'm saying, Atlantis, man. Because it's the priest king, Hosea 3 and 5. One day you're going to wake up, search for Hawa and King David. And this is what we are. Press the 120. Call me Hano. And look out for Hano, man. We're going to do. I'm just going to drop a track called Hano for the cons that's been served for the way, man. Just look out for Hano, man. <laughs> look out for tribal music. It's all up, man. The water for your patience, you know, just to get to the checkpoints we need to get to man and just look out for us man we're gonna have a lot of fun soul bone podcast is popping off nagaville man just look out for all the great creative juggernauts that are gonna have so much drop so much conversation for the cons you know what i mean love the pink dime duchess man michael levesky man all the cons man i see y'all man great work i don't usually watch three hour videos but i'm in north carolina this is touching my soul bone. What? Hey, how kind. Look out for the soul bone podcast, man. My folks are Cherokee. In the book of 103 Facts about black Indians say they spoke damn near spot on Hebrew. Whoa. My dad's side come from Scotland. Yeah. They connect the roots with the Scotia flow, too. It seems it goes back to the Jacobites who came here in the 1600s. I think it was. Hey, man, you always been here. I'm going to that mountain tomorrow. It's about an hour and a half from me. I'll record it. Hey, be safe, first of all. You know, uh, proceed wisdom, whatever you do. And, and, you know, we look forward to hearing your report, man. Thanks, fam. We appreciate you, Con. Press the shine with it, do. These hijacks always follow the same playbook. Now I see clearly that every state park was more than likely ancient Naga ancestral grounds or something to that effect. They always tell the truth in an attempted hijack. Hey, high press the shot. Hey. Pink Dime said pilot comes from the Greek paden, meaning or like the cities of gold. Hey, could this be a city of gold? <laughs> pilot steers and directs a plane. A pilot can also model or be a basis for others of his kind. Shalom. Robinson Nunez, Hawa, my brother Trap. That knowledge king, hey, huh? Virgin Maryland, Virginia, Maryland equals Virgin Mary. Washington, D.C. stands for David's capital. <laughs> I'm out of here, boss, man. Y'all are going up on the comments, man. The water to all y'all dropping great comments every day, man. This is the comments from Preston 119, but Every drop y'all dropping in real time, and it's all hitting home, my nugget. We all are starting to see clearly, and we'll get some more of this mulberry tree flow, and we, we just get started. Call me Hano. Who? Oh, who? <laughs> it's Preston John. My nugget. This has been another installment. The water. But tune it there. Stay up. Suit up. Choose up. Drop Nation. Wow.